Yeah, I was about to type that in chat myself, mate. You've been muted for the so, entire time. Um, for your intro. Yeah. Um, shall we try that again? It's <laughs> a so good. And welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having an amazing day, just like myself. As always, I am your host, Bring Williams, and that is better. That seems to work. I've got mic stuff going, I've got people in the background. It all seems to be working. So, as I was saying, this is the first live stream we are going to be doing on this channel. It's more of a test more than anything. So, as you can tell, just there. Um, we, we're going to have some technical difficulties and some stuff because this is the first time I've actually done a full live stream show. Um, but there will be more of these. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a separate video. Uh, just another disclaimer off the top. Um, if, if you're watching and you aren't our friend group or people that know us, um, we do live near next to a uh, active air base so if you hear some ambient noise out in the background so some like uh planes or things like that then sorry i can't be helped but they do fly quite late um and on top of that if you are watching along with us live um don't forget to get your stuff your comments down in the live chat unfortunately I can't bring it up on the screen at the moment that's something i'm working on but i will be reading them out live to discuss with my co-hosts speaking of co-hosts I have got one guy that is so excited about one thing from Comic-Con. And it's not the thing that you're thinking of. It's, of course, Mr. Nate Hennessy. How are you doing, my man? One thing, what are you talking about? There's about 50. Dungeons and Dragons, come on. I mean, yeah, but I'm looking forward to Marvel, dickhead. I know, I know. But we kept talking about Dungeons and Dragons over and over again. But Have you tried unplugging it and plugging it back yes, in? Yes, I have. I did read your comment. Um, <laughs> it should all be working now for some other reason. That was a glitch with my... Um, yeah, my... there is like a 20-second delay. Yeah, there's about a 20-second delay. So um, just bear with us for that. Um, looking forward to the show, though. We're looking forward to the first live. This is something we're actually doing. It's not something we've edited and recorded. For so many years. I know, I know. And it's we've been talking working. about this for about two years now, Brian. And oh, well, this isn't this week on the silver screen. I will have an announcement separate for that. But this is something that we wanted to talk about. We wanted to do a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, looking forward to it. I hope we have fun, Nate. Next, we have the man that um, makes Kratos quiver in his boots it's mr mike what how you doing now then how's it good, going mate, good you looking forward to talking some sdcc stuff i mean to be fair i'm kind of in the dark as you well know because i don't tend to follow as closely yeah. as you guys do but there is a, there is a couple there is a couple in there that i'm looking forward to damn for damn sure Any like particular? uh john wick because i liked all the series yeah. so far uh D D because it's me and you know i'm a massive nerd um, she Hulk would be a good one, uh, I think. I'd like to see cool. that. Um, uh, yeah, one or two others which we'll get into later cool. on. Cool, no worries. So, uh, just before we get into all that goodness, I'm going to kind of run you through um, the order that we're going to go go into it and what we're going to cover at which. Um, this will also be clipped up as well and be going up as individual clips um, later on. I can't do audio only at the minute. I'm not going to do that because I've got separate plans for that. So, we're going to start with all the Marvel, Marvel Studios announcement, the Multiverse Saga, Phase 4, all that uh, business. We'll be talking a little bit about that. Uh, then we're going to get into Phase 5, Phase 6. Then they had a Marvel uh, Studios or Marvel Animation panel separately, which was um, a mixture of like What If, X-Men 97, uh, Spider-Man Freshman Year, and a couple other things that uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Then we're going to move into uh, the fan favourite here, um, something that I, I don't really know that much about because I've never played it, Dungeons and & Dragons, and I'm going to get these guys' thoughts more than anything on what they thought of the trailer and um, if they're looking forward to next year. Then we're going to cover a little bit on John Wick um, because John Wick put a new trailer out. Uh, so uh, uh, Keanu Reeves was doing a, uh, uh, doing a panel on his Berserker comic, the comic that he wrote and he starred in, and he 
have a go as a look at John Wick 4 that's coming next year. And we'll talk a little bit about DC. There isn't it wasn't as much as we were expecting, so we're going to talk about DC after that. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the National Treasure series. Um, they've got kind of a little teaser. And the Lord of the Rings, um, the Rings of Power, also got a Comic-Con teaser. And then if we have time, there's a couple of smaller announcements that we'll just blitz through as well. So, uh, talking of Marvel, shall we move over to Marvel Phase 4, firstly? So, uh, this, uh, I'm still getting used to this. I didn't have my image up for some stupid reason. So this is also a really good start. Here we go. This should be working now. Hope. Okay, maybe not. Uh, what about now? Yes, there we go. Phase four. Um, so phase four is uh, Kevin Feige first came out on stage and basically said that phase four uh, would be ending with She-Hulk and... Uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, just just quickly, boys, what, what did you make of that announcement? Were you kind of shocked? Were you expecting Phase 4 to kind of go on for a little bit longer? I don't really know what I was expecting, to be fair, because it's, it's um, well, it's Marvel, and they've got God knows how many films in the past and coming up in the future. Yeah. So there's like a lot of stuff, a lot of storylines that they could actually continue with for maybe quite some yeah, time, yeah. whether it be whether it be good or bad, it remains to be seen. But, yeah, it, it kind of surprising that they'd call it quits this early, but I hope maybe they've got something bigger planned well, later on. We, we will get to that. Um, I just want, wanted to make the point that Mike hasn't actually seen all the announcements for Marvel yet. He's seen some of the other ones, but not the Marvel ones. So this is going to be as much a shock to him as it was to me and Nate when we first watched, watched it and found out about it. Um, Nate? Uh, what are you kind of thinking about uh, with regards to um, Phase 4? Nate watched it. Uh, and Nate doesn't remember watching it. What do you mean? You just said I watched it. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch Comic-Con. No. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean you watched Comic-Con. I meant that you had seen the announcement. Mike would get as excited. I didn't as see the announcements. Time. I thought you knew about Phase 5 and Phase 6. Oh, I did, but I didn't know that this was going to be the end of Phase 4. Yeah, so uh, give us your first reactions to the end of Phase 4. I mean, to be honest, uh, it's a good ending point, but I would have personally left it as Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. I, I know a lot of people, um, especially, were uh, talking about, um, uh, what was I going to say, that it might have even gone on for longer. Uh, a lot of the projects that we're going to talk about in Phase 5 um, were going to be end, ended up in phase four but overall for me i think this has been a good ending to um phase four um it was a bit shocking because we did think it was going to go on a little bit longer but um yeah so um let's just pop us all back up on the screen and i'm going to kind of go through the finished phase four timeline and ask you guys what your opinions are and then we're going to talk a little bit about she hulk and black panther individually so Here's, you should be able to see the timeline going up on the screen here. I'm going to hopefully, if my uh, thing works, which it doesn't look like it is, I was going to zoom in a little bit. There we go. That, that'll help. Uh, so start with one division all the way back in uh, 2021, right at the beginning of 2021, which would, for me was a solid start. Then you got Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and then Loki uh, on June 9th. Uh, Black Widow was July 9th and was also on Disney Plus. This is when we were still getting out of COVID. So um, a lot of this was all mumbled and jumbled because of COVID and production times and stuff. And then you had all the crap with uh, Scarlett Johansson yeah. and Disney. Yeah, about how she she had um, was it was it credits or something on the movie and um, she uh, she was supposed to get a percentage of the box office cut and when they just dumped it on. Uh, Disney Plus, which was a Bob Chapek decision. Uh, I can't remember. Um, she ended up losing up to like 25 or $50 million or something. So she ended up taking them to court a very long time ago now. We were talking like this time last year. Um, but yeah, so Black Widow was July 9th. Then we move on to uh, my prob probable favourite of um, Phase 4, Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Um I really enjoyed that film. Really looking forward to seeing more from that world, the world of Talo and those characters. Then we've got Eternals um, dropping in November of 2021. 
all right not not my uh favorite thing marvel's done but we'll kind of talk about that in a minute uh then we go on to hawkeye uh on uh, the end of november beginning of december which is basically a christmas series um which was okay and then we move into spider-man no way home which is a lot of people's favorite movie uh favorite movie of phase four not for me but we'll get into that in a second and then we have moon knight which started off uh this year in march Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness on May 6th and was also and is now also on Disney Plus as well. Then we had the six episode series Miss Marvel, which recently finished like a couple of weeks back. Then we move into Thor Love and Thunder, which I think I'm the only one here that's seen it so far, but it should be coming to Disney Plus soon. I think it'll be coming with D23. We'll talk a lot about D23 when we get into other announcements later on. But I think that'll be dropping on d23 slash disney plus day and then finally the final two ones that we're yet to see uh she hulk that date is now uh uh wrong uh, i'm just gonna pop this out if this works hopefully this works hang on window projector and see if i can change the date close don't want to change the date to one oh no I've just made that really look really bad. You guys won't see it yet, but eighteenth. Does that look any good? <laughs> I'm just gonna wait for it to show up, but eighteenth uh for She Hulk and then Wakanda Forever is coming out um November eleventh. So what do we think to that boys? Out of all of those series wise i watched hawkeye and i actually enjoyed that that was a, that was quite good mm -hmm. anything else to... haven't haven't seen anything else really on there uh so oh i thought you'd seen maybe uh well you i don't remember you saying you hadn't seen shang chi but um i thought you'd seen a bit more from there but no uh nate what's uh your opinion oh uh, i think we uh may have had may have lost nate for the moment nate's got a power cut so when he can rejoin us then he will so at the moment it's just me and mike um so mikey boy yeah um i i've actually really enjoyed phase four most of it i know it's got a lot of criticism from fans and i know like marvel's been struggling during covid and there's been a lot of uh problems with vfx artists and and shit essentially um not getting paid right and being overworked and stuff especially during covid because there's been short workloads and short of shorter time periods to get work done uh but overall yeah. for me i i've mostly enjoyed phase four i think eternals is very forgettable for me it's not great um black widow's okay it's a decent action movie it's kind of like middle mid-tier b-tier mcu uh, Shang Chi for me is the best of Phase Four so far. It's my favourite movie. I've watched it of Phase Four. I've watched it like two or three times, and I still. Um, I do actually have it on DVD. I just haven't got around to watching it. Yeah. So um, hopefully you'll enjoy it when you watch it. I mean, to be fair, Eternals is. I can watch that pretty much as and when. Pretty much uh, all, well, all of them now, are, yeah. except for Thor and Spider Man are on Disney Plus. I mean, I've seen bits of Wonder Vision. Yeah. Not saying it's bad; it just didn't grab my attention. Um, like on YouTube or like on TikTok, something like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Black Widow, I saw bits of. That does look interesting. I do want to actually sit down and watch that at some point. Um, obviously the ones that haven't come out yet, like She Hulk, and what was the other one? Uh, Wonder uh, Forever. Wakanda Forever. Yeah, Black Panther Two. Wakanda Forever. Sorry um i want to see those two i mean i'd have to go back and watch black panther because i haven't seen it yeah um so i'd have to go back and watch them in order so then i know what's going on um but no i mean phase four for the bits that i have seen and discussed with you and nate about it's it's definitely been it's been good from what i've heard i just haven't seen cool um i i, I normally would give uh oh sorry i've just gone over to your camera let's go back to <laughs> this one because i thought you were going to add more to that um but uh me me and uh nate are just going to uh me, me, and nate, me and mike um i'm just going to carry on for a minute I, I meant to say nate's just had a power cut so i'm i'm just typing to him in the background uh just to see what he wants to do but um overall um 
Phase four has been pretty good for me. Hopefully we'll get his opinions when he gets back. So, um, yeah, let's move on to the next thing that we're going to be seeing in uh, phase four, which is, of course, She-Hulk. Um, now, I've been uh, the trailers haven't been that well received, mainly due to the fact that um, the, the CGI has not been particularly good on Ta Tatiana Maslany, who did... Um, play she hulk the hulk stuff still looks pretty good in my opinion like hulk still looks um as good as he does in end game and, and all that smart hulk we should say because he's not the big brute in hulk he's smart hulk um but um i i've i've really uh, i'm really looking forward to this especially after the teaser they dropped which we'll get into in a minute um where we've got the appearance of Wong. This feels like it's going to be uh, the tie-in between um, Shang-Chi and all that. Because I think this is set before anything else in Phase 4. I think half of it is set before Phase 4. And around like the Endgame period, in between like um, the five-year gap in Endgame. And then some of it is set after, um, or kind of in between all the other things we've had so it'd be cool to see where this sits on the timeline obviously um if you've seen the trailer and you've seen shang chi um this was in the trailer so i'm not really spoiling much for you mike it was basically a glorified cameo um yeah but wong turned up with abomination from the original incredible hulk 2008 with edward norton uh the abomination was played by tim roth there they're bringing tim roth back which i think is really really good casting in my opinion um she hulk um looks like it's going to be a really good Ali McBeal type of uh drama like 30 something uh 30 something comedy mixed with kind of like a courtroom drama because she's like Jennifer okay. Jennifer Walters herself the character is the cousin of Bruce Banner and she end, in the comic she ends up getting her powers through a blood transfusion she's dying or something like that or she ends up in an accident and she needs to have a blood transfusion and the only person close enough to save her life is bruce and she obviously he obviously gives her some of his blood it's filled with 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 the gamma um gamma rays yeah. and stuff and then she ends up becoming she hulk in this if you've seen the trailer you'll know that she um ends up in a car crash and i think some of bruce's blood drips on her and then she becomes she hulk um but there's a, there's a lot of stuff in here that's that's kind of tying Phase Four together. As I say, Tim Roth's back. There was a scene in Shang Chi where um, uh, while Shang Chi's fighting his sister, there's a bit to Abomination of Wong fighting, and um, where when Abomination and and Wong are fighting, there's a portal that opens up in the dressing room in the background. And both Wong and Abomination end up walking through that portal. And then there's kind of this, like, almost looks like a UFC cage with some lights on it um, in the background. And then we were wondering when that was going to show up again, because uh, this has basically been the Wong cinematic universe for Phase 4, because he's been in bloody everything, uh, pretty much. <laughs> um, so Wong was going to... Uh, we're going to see more of that and then more about abomination obviously um we'll get on to some more daredevil stuff a little bit later on but daredevil is going to be in this series um in his old red and black uniform um which i'll get i've got some gifts of in a minute that i'll show you in a minute and then there's obviously um a proper normal hulk is in it smart hulk is in it so there's a lot of stuff here that um looks to be good Nine episodes rather than six episodes, which I know me and my, and me and Nate specifically are really getting annoyed with Marvel doing these fucking six episode series because it's net it's too short to be a full TV series and build out arcs, and it's too long to be a movie because there's too much filler in there. So they even need to push the length that little bit longer to like a, a nine ten episode series or even an eight episode series. Because it always feels like the first four or five episodes of one of these Disney Plus shows. Really, really good build up. And then they're like, oh shit, we've run out of episodes. Now we just got to do the finale and kind of cram everything into like a 30 minute, six episode series. The reason why WandaVision works so well for me is because it was paced at nine episodes. So um, it seemed to work a little bit better and it flowed a little bit better because we didn't just have to drop everything at once. There, there, were, there were some episodes that were very exposition heavy. Game of Thrones final season. <laughs> yeah. 
like it, it doesn't feel like everything just happens for the sake of like the series is ending and now we need to wrap everything up in one division like like you alluded to game of thrones which we may talk about a little bit later but for me i'm really looking forward to this uh hopefully you're looking forward to this um my... i am actually because it's it's i like the fact that there's more movies with female superheroes yeah so do I, and like it's like it. It's it seems like it should have been done a long time ago. Yeah, I mean it. It probably it, to be fair, it was in a few, but it wasn't as frequent no. They, as they it didn't is get now. their own series or their own movie. The the, the only really female led movie we ever had was Captain Marvel, and then they've kind of done more in Phase Four, which I've enjoyed. Like Miss Marvel, One Division was led, She Hulk, Black Widow, all the other bits and bobs yeah. that we've uh, kind of shown um, to talk about, but. Um, just quickly, uh, I-, I talked about it there. Um, what do you think about, um, firstly, Daredevil coming back, uh, played by Charlie Cox from the Netflix series, and coming into the MCU wider, which obviously we'll talk a little bit more later on with Echo and Daredevil getting his own 18-episode TV series. What do you think about Daredevil appearing in she uh, I th- I think it'd be pretty interesting. Yeah. Because I haven't. I mean, I've seen little snippets of, um, uh, for, yeah, from the Netflix series. Sorry, I've kind of got the stream playing in the background at the yeah, same yeah, time, just so I can make sure sound. Yeah. So I can make sure the sound is good. Um, but no, I think I think it would be interesting to actually see the contrast. You know yeah, yeah. of doing different aspects and both thinking, you know, they're, they're good and other stuff like that. Cause I remember Ben Affleck's Daredevil. You remember that? Yeah. One? Yeah. I'm trying to get that film on, on Blu-ray. I've only just recently got Alexa. I'll go get that. Cause it's just out there. Um, cause I re- I really enjoyed that. Um, and some of the aspects to do with the film, obviously they did little spin off films with, um, what was the woman's characters called? I can't remember. Played like Electro. Oh, something. Jennifer Garner played Electro. Yeah, but like they had a little film with literally just Electro. Yeah, yeah. She played she, she played Electra in his film, and then he got she got her own spin-off yeah. film, which is what I actually have on Blu-ray. Yeah, and it's like so. I've, obviously, it's probably not going to be the same characters from back then, but I do feel like I want to see the contrast of it all. Uh, sorry if you hear me click clack clacking on my mic. Um, I've got um. Uh, I'm I'm typing to Nate at the same time just to like make make sure where he's up to. But carry on, Mike. Sorry. No, it's all good. This is like I'm just I'm looking forward to seeing the contrast because obviously if Daredevil's having a cameo in She-Hulk, maybe that alluding to other characters from Daredevil coming into it, like they've done with Wong and uh, with Wong in everything. It's 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 nice to actually have a contrast of maybe some other characters from other parts of the universe popping mm. in and seeing where it goes. Well, just well, uh, uh, another th- another question I wanted to ask you uh, while we're at it: What do you think about uh, when I can find the image I'm looking for about Wong being in this in general? Because I think um, it's good that they're finally um, putting stuff together essentially is the word i'm looking for so um like they're starting to tie the desperate uh, disparate uh parts of phase four because phase four has felt very um just let me go back to thingy so you can actually see me phase four has felt very disparate as in like they're all separate islands like miss marvel's over here and thor's over here and and uh, Doctor Strange is over here doing his own little story, and then this is over here. There's been hints and smaller through lines, like One Division going into Doctor Strange and picking up Wanda's character yeah. after One Division, but there's not really been any huge, um, like thread in the knot like they normally do, like they did with the first three phases. I just wanted to get your opinion on what you, why you think it's taken till now to kind of tie those things up and maybe they just haven't thought of a genuinely good way to do it and now they they have or what they think they have is something good to introduce to try and because they intersected pretty much every single film they've done up to this point haven't they 
So it's like you've got cameos and little bits, and then you get the main movies, you know, like Endgame. Um, when all the films before Endgame, you saw in the little each individual films that uh, the characters had, it was all sort of tied in together, and then it came together as one big thing. So maybe they're doing that again. I don't know. Oh yeah, I hope so. I really do. I really hope I hope that's what they're doing. Um, I just wanted to uh, kind of talk a little bit about Wong myself because I'm a very big Wong fan and I've loved that he's kind of been the the tying piece in between everything so far. Um, and then I'll I'll let you talk about some other bits and bobs while I go and get my Electro Blu-ray so I can show them off. Is <laughs> 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 my other Netflix bits. Um, so yeah. Uh, uh, just move me over. I, I'm still getting the hang of all this um, stream deck malarkey. So I am going to be a little bit quicker going forward, I hope. Um, where's me Wong one? Push the button. Uh, so there we go. And you can now kind of see Wong there with me. Um, uh, I don't know if people can hear you, Mike. Can uh, Just give me a line a minute, will you? Yeah, no, that's cool. I hope, hopefully, you haven't kind of like been <laughs> left in the tri cam because uh, the problem was is like having two cameras, they both send like yours and Mike's, uh, yours and Nate's audio through your camera and through Nate's camera. So, always have to have one camera muted, otherwise, it echoes. So, some so I think when I'm on this in individual scene here, nobody's gonna be able to hear me, but nobody's gonna be able to hear you. But, um, doesn't matter. Um, We'll, we'll get back to talking to you in a minute. But yeah, Wong. Uh, why do I love Wong so much? Firstly, he's played by Benedict Wong. <laughs> How much more perfect casting can you get? So Wong is played by Mr. Wong. Um, but I, I just think he's he's a really funny character. He's really interesting. Um, he's played really well. And it kind of makes sense for him to be the through line because um, Doctor Strange is going to be one of the... We need a new big three because we obviously had Tony... Cap and uh, Thor in in the first three phases in the Infinity Saga, and now we're kind of getting. Um, I think it's going to end up being the new Black Panther, Doctor Strange, and Captain Marvel are going to be the next generation. Maybe um, Sam Wilson, Captain America, Falcon, Captain America, maybe in there as well. But I think that's going to be the next three, and obviously Captain Marvel doesn't really come in until a little bit later. We're only just getting Black Panther now, whereas we've had a Doctor Strange movie. He's been in Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, it kind of makes sense for him to be in Shang-Chi. So I think I think it makes a lot of sense because this phase has really been quite a lot about Doctor Strange. It's been in at least two or three things. So I do think it makes sense, and, and I'm really hoping that this ties everything together for me. So uh, just I'm uh, just going to get your thoughts on Hulk being in this as well because I know a lot of people are um, uh, I know a lot of people are, are shitting on this She-Hulk trailer just because it looks like they're depowering Hulk to kind of push She-Hulk up to make She-Hulk look better or more powerful like Kevin Feige said back in the day where he kind of tried to make he, he always used to say Captain Marvel is more powerful than Thor and all the, all the bros Kind of got angry that oh, mm -hmm. making a woman stronger than a man, Ugh, all that bollocks. Uh, but uh, it came out. There was a teaser that came out the other day. Obviously not Comic Con, but um, there was a scene within all these trailers where like both She Hulk and Hulk are like throwing rocks, and it looks like She Hulk's throwing them farther or whatever. And then there was a teaser today where he literally just threw the rock into the fucking atmosphere. So obviously they're not depowering him. People tend to jump to conclusions too much so i want to kind of get your opinion on hulk uh in the mcu so far how you think they've handled him and how you would like them to handle hulk in the she hulk series considering he's a bit more like hawkeye to kate bishop in this series does that make sense in the hawkeye series it's gonna yeah be more the mentor figure i mean i mean hulk is the hulk if you've seen all the movies that have come prior to all this he's usually or at first you saw him as basically, you saw, was it Bruce Banner? Yeah, yeah, Bruce. God, I, I wasn't 100% sure. Um, usually in the older films, you see Bruce Banner, something happens, then the Hulk comes out, angry, smash everything. 
and obviously now they've progressed to that where Hulk is now um yeah, Hulk is now basically Bruce Banner and the Hulk. So he's still got the brute. He's still got the brute. He's still a massive man, but he's got the brains behind it now as well. So the fact that he has... Um, I love the fact I'm just talking to myself because he's disappeared. Um, the fact that you see them throwing stones and stuff, in my opinion, like it's a good thing because he's, he's basically being a mentor. Um... Oh, you're coming back. I'll wait for you to put your heads. Oh, no. You... Yeah. You all right? Yeah, I was just, I was just saying, because I got, I kind of got through the final bit. But what I'm thinking is, the scene you were talking about where they were throwing stones. Yeah, yeah. Because Hulk has now gone from what we used to see, which is basically a brute, angry Hulk of a man, literally, hence the yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Um, smashing the hell out of stuff. And now you see... Bruce Banner's Hulk, which is basically he's still a beast of a man, but he now has his brains behind him. And um, now in this film where you mentioned about them throwing stones and people going, oh, they're depowering Hulk. They're not depowering Hulk. He's being a mentor to train his cousin because of what she's now going through. He might not necessarily fully understand everything that is happening, but he has a better understanding and a handle of it than, say, if she went at it alone, when he did, when this first happened yeah, to yeah. him. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're not depowering her, he's training her. It's like, she may not have some of the same powers or skills as he does. Yeah. Because who's to say she's good exact, who's to say that she's going to be exactly the yeah, same? Yeah, exactly. I, I agree with that. So, in my opinion... I see him basically just mentoring her in what he knows. Yeah. Whatever else comes next is, like, for the rest of us, out of the blue, hopefully, hopefully, in a, like, in a good thing, like, if they make it a film, like, if they make a film just about her. Eventually. Um, or set, eventually, yeah, about, and maybe we see something different that we didn't expect to see, which is not out of the blue for Marvel. Yeah, exactly. I, so but they're not depowering him. He's just training him. It's like a, it's it's like in the old films where you have the mentoring scene where they train. That's the way I see it. Yeah, I, I feel the same way as you. To be honest, um, I'm just trying to see if I can find the scene in um, on the trailer, and then maybe I can drag it across. Hopefully this works. It doesn't crash my PC. Hopefully you can see that. Let's go full screen a moment. I'm not going to play too much of it because I don't want to get copyrighted, but. Um, Essentially, uh, it's this bit right here. Where she throws it into the fucking atmosphere. <laughs> so there's that bit there, which which looks pretty cool. But yeah, I, I, I don't get that. I don't get that whole argument to me. It just it just doesn't work. But there you go. So um, that's pretty much everything on She-Hulk. Uh, I just want to say hello to my father who's just joined the chat and I should have said hello earlier to uh, your brother as well. Um, I'm just going to type that in. Uh, hopefully you guys get that over on the chat here. <laughs> this should be coming through. This this is all kind of new, so I'm still getting used to it. But yeah, that pretty much covers everything for She-Hulk for us. Um, I'm sorry that Nate can kind of be involved in this. But um, overall, I think I'm, I'm really looking forward to the show. Uh, another thing that I'm kind of really looking forward to is a movie called Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So obviously um, this was after the very tragic passing of Chadwick Boseman. Um, Marvel kind of had to figure out what they were going to do with the character going forward. Uh, I know a lot of people, there's a lot of con controversy about whether they should recast T'Challa because he's such a crucial character and so important. Um, and then there's people in the other camp that think it would be rude and disrespectful to kind of um, r remove uh, that character, essentially. Uh, to not mm. uh, think it would be rude to not to recast, I should say. So I'm I'm really looking forward to this film. Uh, we do have a date for it. I'm just going to double check what that date is. And then hopefully, if it works properly, 
I can get it to get it to show up on the screen in magic. But um just Well once you try and Yeah, you that talk out, about I'm... your experience with the first Black Panther. Because I haven't actually seen any of the Black Panther films. My experience with Black Panther has just been with like Thor, Wanda, like, like Avengers basically movies. the main, yeah, the Avengers movies. That has been my experience. I haven't actually seen just the Black Panther movies by themselves. Yeah. I'm, it's it, it's one of them weird things because, yes, you can say that it's um good and bad that you know that they wish to continue with the with the movies. Yeah, I genuinely cannot say myself if it's a good or bad decision until I've actually sat down, watched all of the movies, including yeah, yeah, this yeah, one, and then make my own decision from that. Because obviously, I don't know. I don't know uh, Chadwick. I don't know what his thoughts would be if you know if he was still around and if he all of a sudden decided he wants to leave. Would he be happy for someone to obviously be recast and they continue on with it? Would he not? I I have no, I no well, idea. Well, I think they should have got his wishes in um, order. Marvel have got to know that he was going to pass beforehand, surely, because they can't have just uh, left it to chance, um, especially if they... if And Chadwick wouldn't have left it to chance. The character of Black Panther is way too important, too crucial to both the MCU and to like wider pop culture and the wider like uh, landscape, especially for black people. Let's, let's be honest about it. It's their superhero. It's the character that they really want. And it's too powerful just to kind of kill off that character, in my opinion. I think it should have been recast, but the, the cop to have, have had this ready, like way back. When... I mean, to be fair, Black Panther, as long as he's played from this point on kind of thing as long as he's played in a way that actually works for the movies and everything else yeah i mean to be fair black panther chadwick's black panther on the bits that i had seen in the in the movies was bad ass i am not, like he's just he's beast yeah so i'm like but it's 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 mixed feelings on because I don't, I don't know who they've... Have they recast? No, or who have they got we, we will get on to that in a minute. They're not recasting the character of T'Challa who plays Black Panther. No, I know that. If you've seen the trailer, you know there is another separate Black Panther. So um, now that we've kind of um, talked a little bit about... Uh, well, my, well, let me talk about my previous experience with Black Panther. I really enjoyed the first film. Did you think it was a little bit overhyped and the fact that it got a bunch of Oscar nominations considering there were other MCU movies and stuff that were more deserving in my opinion, especially Logan. The year Logan got um, a nomination should have got a Best Picture nomination because it was one of the top 10 movies, top 10 best movies of 2017. But I really do enjoy the character, I enjoy the world of Wakanda and that is what uh, the director... Um, Whose name escapes me, even though he's he's one of my favourites. Uh, uh, Ryan uh, Coogler, John Co uh, Co what is his name? Uh, Coogler. Ryan Coogler. I was right, Ryan Coogler. Um, I Fruit Valve Station. I've got to admit, I haven't seen. I love the first Creed movie, and I really do enjoy the first one. And the fact that he says we're going to be exploring the world of Wakanda. And obviously now it's been announced that we're going to get um, Namor, the Submariner. But he's not basically the MCU's version of Aquaman, but he plays that role. He's the leader of Atlantis. In this car in this um, version, played by t uh, actor Tenok Quirta, uh, it's going to be a place called Talakan instead. So they're going to be, uh, we've obviously got the Asian inspired world of the MCU with Talo from Shang-Chi. We've obviously got kind of Africa, the Africa realm explored within um, uh, Black Panther. And um, we've, we've got a lot of people represented, but one of the only re people that aren't really represented um, in the MCU is Latin American people. And uh, they've, they've said that uh, Namor and specifically Talacan is going to be very much inspired by um the, the latin american culture and uh, the aztecs and the incans and things like that so 
there's going to be a lot of that imagery within the film and uh, obviously in the comics uh, Namor and Black Panther don't always get along and there's always been quite a few wars between both of them because Namor is pretty hot headed Namor is also a mutant and if you've seen episode 6 of Miss Marvel I'll just put a spoiler I'll have, hold my hand up as a spoiler um, Mark I don't know if you just want to mute your headset for 5 seconds or if you really care I can mute my headset, mate, but I'll still hear you talk. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I'll just say, in Miss Marvel, uh, the word mutant was used. Is what I'm going to say. And now that we're getting to Namor, Namor is also a mutant. So they're setting up that groundwork for the X Men later down the line in Phase Six and or Phase Seven. So um, I just want to now that we've kind of talked a little bit about um, stuff that's happened, some of the setup and stuff. I kind of want to talk a little bit about the trailer. And what specifically uh, stood out for me? Uh, obviously, firstly, as I say, it's it's this guy, this guy right here, Namor. It, you can see kind of this like Aztec, Incan, Latin American inspired uh, imagery. The stuff that he's wearing. He's obviously got his pointed ears from the comics. He's got wings on his wings on his shoes. Um, you guys probably haven't seen it yet because it hasn't come through. Um, but uh, yeah, he's got these wings and his shoes, and it looks really, really good. And the other cool thing about Namor is his throne is a bloody megalodon's uh, <laughs> mouth, jaw, set of jaws. Like in case, in case. You... Oh, he's got a megalodon head, basically. Basically, like his his throne, not him personally, but his throne that he sits in, like the Black Panther throne or the Iron Throne, is literally a, a chair. With a set of megalodon teeth on top of bottom. Oh, nice. So um, I, I'll just see if I can highlight it here, this bit here. So that's his megalodon throne, and it looks sick. The first time I watched the trailer, it was like 3 a.m. I missed it because it was a quick snapshot like that. And then I watched some other YouTubers address it, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> like, how the fuck could I miss that? And then you see it right there. You can probably see it now, Mike, as well. Um, yeah. It's it's ma manic. Um, that does look pretty badass, though. I'm not gonna lie. Exactly. So um, hopefully this doesn't crash it. Can you see my OBS now? Can you see what? Uh, streams catch. I, yeah, I can on Sky. Cool. So it's just so you're a little bit ahead of the rest. So um, there's that to start with. Um, this is, this is Megadon throne and, and my thoughts are kind of like racing all over the shop but there's that um, we also talk about uh, the Talacan people um, this is where everything kind of I've got so many tabs and shit open uh, the Talacan people and yes I, I know what's been said about these they do of course look like you know what I'm going to say don't you Mike no not Avatars. really uh but uh, i think this is because they're ocean going people and blue helps them like uh blend in with their background oh, so okay. um just be just before we move on i just want to let you kind of take this and um i want to see what you see what you think about um like namor and and it not being an anis but being talacan and his, his people and stuff and see what you kind of think about like that imagery and that idea i know you're not very familiar with name or not i'm not really it's only what i've picked up from watching youtube and stuff so uh kind of kind of give me an idea what, what you think uh what i think about what about Talacan about, general, Talacan, about um name or from my description of him and what he is he's basically like aquaman in the mcu like what what realms do we kind of get to explore what does that open up for the mcu to do a bit like if you've seen the aquaman film like all the under underwater ocean imagery uh the way it looks different ways to fight the fact that it's inspired by aztec in england and latin american imagery um and things i mean i, th I think it will be interesting to obviously to have the latin american his like the actual knowing about the history behind it that would be kind of cool but I genuinely can't say much because I kind of, yeah, I need to see it to make a decision and go, yes, that was good, or no, that wasn't quite for me, and then to talk about the character build. 
character creation, how he's portrayed, and everything else. It's hard. It's hard to say without actually sitting down and watching. I get it. I get it. Um, uh, and the other thing is, is the mutants coming into the MCU. Uh, obviously, I've still got the Talakan image up there, but like mutants being mentioned in in Miss Marvel and now this. Uh, what what does that mean to you? Are you looking forward to seeing the mutants in the MCU? I mean. It'll be interesting because I have always been a massive fan of the X Men. I have been well, you've yeah, for as long as you've known me, you know for a fact I've seen every single X Men movie there has ever yeah. been. Okay, yeah. Um, but it's like mutants in MCU. That would be interesting because it, it's a weird thing because obviously you have all the heroes, yeah, yeah. like, and you have some of the heroes that have powers, but they've come from other planets. Um. You have people who are from Earth who, like um, Captain Marvel. Oh my God! Oh, he's back. back! Hey, he's back, back again. Right, carry on, Mike. Well, well. Uh... Um, but it's like, but it's like Miss Marvel. She was from Earth and then got her powers from the incident that happened. I know it's a film; it's been out for a while, but I don't really want to say spoilers anyway. Do you mean Captain Marvel, not Miss Marvel? Sorry, Captain Marvel. Uh... Miss yes. Marvel's the show that's just come out. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm getting it confused. Um, sorry, I just have to... So would you still class them as mutants, considering everything else? Uh, say that again, sorry. I missed I missed what you said. I said, would you, could you actually class them as mutants, considering everybody else who's already in it, who has powers, whether they're from Earth or not? Yeah, I can. It, it's like, it's... it. it I mean, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. Exactly. Sorry, I was trying. I was trying to be funny and add a little avatar in there, but it wasn't really working. No. Um, yeah, I kind of noticed it because it's just popped up. On yeah, my it wasn't now. working. So um, I'm going to carry on. Anyway, um, Nate, since now you're back, obviously you missed out on on She-Hulk stuff. So um, I don't even know what you're talking about. What now? Yeah, we'll we'll kind of fill that in. But like, you've missed the She-Hulk stuff on kind of what we're talking about now with with Black Panther and Namor and and uh talican and all that um so firstly uh just pass put you up on the screen and maybe give you a, a she hulk image back to, to kind of discuss she hulk before i discuss she hulk can i just say kids in barnsley are dicks because a kid rammed his bike into the electrical <laughs> condoms <laughs> that's why my power went out because they swat rammed his bike into it brilliant sounds about right But anyway, yeah. So just about... talk a little bit about She-Hulk. Obviously, Wong being in it. Um, uh, we also discussed a little bit about like Hulk being de depowered. People are saying that Hulk is being depowered because um, they want to make She-Hulk look better because she's the female version and all that bollocks. Um, and there was a bunch of other stuff. As uh, well. The trailer looks good. Uh, I saw the little thing they did with the date in video yeah, earlier. Yeah. That was hilarious. Uh, it looks good. I can't wait to see She-Hulk, finally. Good. And it's good to see Matt Murdock again as Daredevil before we actually get the Daredevil yeah, exactly. series. So, um, yeah, and, and as, as I was saying, uh, moving into, uh, obviously, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Namor, and all those people. Um, Namor's obviously a mutant. He's king of Atlantis. He's like Marvel's version of Aquaman. He's not exactly, but he is like Marvel's version of Aquaman. Um, what do you feel about number one, him coming in and being a mutant? The other fact that, that it's not actually Atlantis; it's being called Talakan instead, and the fact that um, we've we've obviously got the Asian-inspired side of the MCU with Shang Chi. We've obviously got the African-inspired side of the MCU with Black Panther. Um, and and there's a lot of different people represented, but the one uh, type of people that aren't represented are Latin American people. And the fact that a lot of this seems to be, in, uh, a lot of Namor and Talakan is inspired by um, Incas and Aztecs and, and the culture of that region. So... I don't know. Do you, do you not have any thoughts on... I don't know, because I, I watched the trailer, but it's been a while, and... I've slept since then, and it was very dark, if I remember, and I couldn't see much. Cool. No, that's cool. I just, just wanted to get your opinion. Um, So, now that we've kind of covered 
that side of it and the war between Talakan and, and uh, Wakanda and that. Let's kind of talk about some of our returning characters. Um, so firstly, I want to just pop this up on the screen because I thought that was uh, pretty sad, seeing the mural of Chadwick um, and knowing that he the, the funeral is going to actually happen within the film when we see Hat. I, I don't know if we're actually going to see um, how he died. But um, it'd be interesting to see how the MCU overall would deal with that. What do you, what do you guys think? I don't know, because obviously Chadwick uh, died with cancer, yeah. didn't he? And um, I, I've not seen Fall of and Thunder, however, I do know they do show on cancer. So are they going to kill Black Panther off the same way, say that he's got cancer or something, even though Wakanda would have the healing powers for that and shit? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Mike? I'm not sure, because I feel like if they visibly show killing him off, I feel like it might be in bad taste. Yeah, no, that's true, I get that. So, if if there is a little homage to him, then obviously I wouldn't mind that. If they kill him off, I, in my opinion, I feel like it would kind of be in bad taste. Well, not necessarily, because a lot of movies have done that, especially, like, Rise of Skywalker, they did it with Princess Leia. Yeah. Because obviously that... Carrie Fisher had died a couple but of years she before. had filmed footage for that film. Chadwick hadn't filmed Yeah, it. but they killed her off. Yeah, yeah, camera. no, no. My, my yeah. thing would be, do you reckon they will shoot new stuff to show his death within this film? Or do you reckon they'll just think... kind of go right, right off the bat, T'Challa's dead, kind of allude to how he died, and then we just get on with the story that we've already got? They might deep fake or CGI. Well, I was yeah. tempted to say that. Uh, me and Mark obviously spoke about it. But how do you feel about um, the fact that T'Challa isn't being recast? Do you reckon he should have been recast? Or do you reckon you're happy with a new character like Shuri or Okoye or whatever taking the role? I think, recast, I think recasting is all right. Well, would have been all right about 10 years ago, which obviously we know it kind of was with um, Terrence Howard yeah, being yeah. replaced by Don Cheadle. However, um, I don't think they can get away with it with how big Marvel is now. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, I'm still kind of torn on it. I want to see what they do in the film before we decide. So next, uh, I'll kind of talk a little bit about some characters we've seen. So you've obviously got Koye up on the screen now. I'm going to talk about some other characters. It's nice to see the returning cast. You've got Queen Ramonda played by Angela Bassett. You've got Koye played by Dana Guerrera. And then Shuri's coming back played by Letitia Wright. Um. I'm excited to see these characters back, and it seems to be more of a female-led movie in this, from the Wakanda side of it, because most of the main men have kind of been killed off. His dad's dead, and he's obviously died within this film to child himself. So I'm excited to see it from that side of the fence. And to... Well, if they turn Shuri into the next Black Panther, do you think they'll have the same sort of scene as the first Black Panther where... Um... Obviously, they got. Is it the spirit plane? I can't remember. What it's oh called. yeah, where well, they go and see the the panther god Bast and and what have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. obviously, in Black Panther, then um, uh, T'Challa's dad did show up in that. I, I can see it. So maybe they might CGI Chadwick Boseman into that or something or deep fake him in. Maybe, maybe that's the way you do it. But um, so yeah. I mean, to be fair, if she does become Black Panther, she's got the brains behind it because she is smart as anything, yeah. ain't she? Yeah, so I could I could see that I could see that working to be fair. I could see it basically being like Black Panther version Tony Stark. Well maybe not like the billionaire Playboy philanthropist part, but you know where I'm going. Yes. Oh I, I, I don't want to show any images, but let's let's now talk and address that thing before we move on to finishing phase four off. Um I kind of know who's going to be the new Black Panther. It's kind of been announced. Um, well, it's not been announced, but it got leaked. Uh, Lego did a set, um, and there was a set uh, of Black Panther versus um, Namor. And it looks like it might be Shuri. What do you feel about it? it that's that's not, it's it. not definitive. But there was an image of her maybe in half a suit. It could be that she's saving the suit for somebody else. But um, if that's true, the toys always come out and leak shit anyway. So 
I'd be fine with it. I reckon they address it in the next trailer that comes out. I reckon we get another trailer at D23 and it addresses it. Mike? Uh, I mean, I hate it when stuff like that gets supposedly leaked because there's no way to know, even if it is like for Marvel stuff, there's no way to know it's not, it's like 100% true because that could happen and all of a sudden they could change it just out of reasons. Yeah. So um, I'll wait and see until the next trailer and then go from there. Go from there. So uh, that brings to the end Black Panther segment of this. We're going to kind of speed through the next couple of things because there aren't as many images and stuff to talk about. So um, phase four, just to sum up phase four overall for you guys that have seen maybe most of it. Um, what have you thought of phase four overall so far? And basically not that it's, not that it's ending but what you what have you thought of fa the quality of phase four should i say who wants to take it oh i thought you was open oh well, it's open uh, open open to you guys and then i will open it up to the commenters all right um do you want me to go first by or do you wanna yeah go for it mate you've just got back so it's been mainly been me and okay. Bryn. so you yeah, crack at it mate i mean how much of phase four have you actually seen though he said like two things we, we discussed this earlier so i'm kind of giving you the yeah you go first because i'll talk about it cool. a little bit more okay, than you yeah. right i'll uh put that one up go on then mike <clears throat> i mean from what little i've seen i've enjoyed um i am just going to keep this short and brief because i haven't seen a lot of it um all the films, all the series that I have seen, I've really enjoyed. Uh, when I actually get a chance to, yeah. uh, I will obviously sit down and watch more. And then in future, I can turn around and go, when we do another either live stream or video, um, talking about like phase four as and when it ends, I'll be like, yeah, okay, I've, I've enjoyed it. I've not enjoyed it, blah, 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 blah. But right now, I'm, I'm the couple things I have seen, I've really enjoyed. Cool. Nate. One division. It started with One Division, yeah. didn't it? Uh, One Division, I really enjoyed. Uh, Cap um, Captain America. Well, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, enjoyed, but not as much as One Division. I think me and you shared the same Opinion. thing with that, don't we, Bryn? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of what came after. That was uh, Black Widow, wasn't it? Was Loki's it Loki? Because that was June, and then Black Widow. Loki was, was really good, just because of one person who I love. You know who that uh, is? Lady Loki. Kang? No. No. Wow. Oh, yeah, no, we'll, yeah, I should get that. <laughs> Fucking love Owen Wilson. I'm going to have to get that. I'm going to have to get that as a, as a media play on my stream. There's a little soundbite. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Every time Nathan says something, wow. Yeah, uh, Black Widow um, next. Yeah, at first, uh, I hated this movie. Well, not hated it. I really disliked it. I thought it was a bit crap. And then I watched it again. Loved it. Uh, well, not loved it, but liked it a bit more. Then I watched it again, and now I'm going to say it's probably my favourite movie in Phase really? 4. Really? I loved it. I love it. Because I remember I when Florence we because... originally had the discussion, me, I think it was myself, you and Ty, like yeah, you weren't big fans of it. I didn't like it, but um, now I, I think it is definitely the best. Shang-Chi Shang was amazing. Don't get me wrong, I did enjoy it. Uh, Eternals was fine until the last 10 minutes. And... I mean, part of my love of Black Widow is Florence Pooh. I think she's amazing. Pooh, she's amazing. Uh, Yelena is hilarious. And we get her back in Hawkeye, which made me happy because she's fucking great. Uh, what came after that? Well, after uh, Hawkeye, Spider-Man No Way Home. What was before that? So, you just done Black Widow, Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi, pretty good. I did enjoy it. I like the uh, Kung Fu in it. Casting, there's one person I'm not a massive fan of, and that's Aquafina. Aquafina, Aquafina, whatever the oh, fuck yeah. bloody name is, yeah. Yeah, for me, it's just, I don't like her style of comedy. Mm -hmm. But she was all right. Uh, Eternals? I've already said, like the movie until a certain point, and then hated last 10 minutes. Apart from one person, and you think you you're gonna think I'm gonna talk about Harry Styles being it. that pissed me off. But there's one guy who I hate throughout the entire movie, and it's that Irish kid. Yeah, Barry Cowan. Yep. Um. 
A Hawkeye? Uh, give me two seconds. My headset okay. stopped working. Um, Where's my headset? Good. And then we're going to... I'll let you sum up, and I'll just sum up mine quick, and then we'll run through... Um, thingy. Okay. And just, uh, do you want me to take a quick break, or is it working? Right, I'm back. back. I'm back, I'm back. Right. Uh, for some reason, the connection was loose, and then my headset wouldn't turn. Hawkeye. There we go. Hawkeye was hilarious. Good. I absolutely uh, love the person who played uh, Kate in it. Uh, Heidi Steinfeld, yeah. Yeah, I think she's great. Uh, obviously, seeing... Um... This is the one series you've actually seen, isn't it, Mike? It is, yeah. I enjoyed it really thoroughly. I tried to think characters' names. I'm shit with names. Uh, Chris Renner, there we go. Seeing him back Jeremy as Hawkeye Renner, was yeah. good. Sorry, Jeremy no, Renner, I wasn't trying to correct Renner. you. I was just, just saying that, Jeremy Renner. No, it's my, it's my head. It doesn't work. And then, obviously, Florence Pooh is amazing. Pooh, Pew, whatever the fuck you want to call her. And uh, seeing Kingpin was and nice. And Elliot being played and... by D'Onofrio, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, seeing D'Onofrio is always good. What, what, what comes uh, after no that? No Way Home. You hate this, I well, love it. Talk about That's all I'm going to say. This movie gave me a lot of nostalgia, especially with Green Goblin and Doc Hawk. I even have one of those reverse. Uh, reversible octopus plushies, you know, the ones that's got like two different sides. I even called it Alf, as in like Alfred Molina. That's cool. So, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Moon Knight, I think, was next. March. Moon Knight. Bryn already knows my opinion on this. I love it. <laughs> I'm, that's all I'm going to say. I fucking love uh, it. Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. I only watched it recently. I had a sort of opinion that it's good. It isn't as good as the first Doctor Strange, and there's a lot of weird CGI in it that just didn't work. Like the third eye, the zombie, I didn't like. Cool. That's just Sam Raimi doing Sam Raimi shit. Yeah, I just think not um, America stuff. Chavez. <laughs> I think America Chavez is a good addition. Good. Uh, I think it's Miss Marvel next. Okay, you know my opinion on this. Uh, I think this is definitely the best series we've had. I would be inclined to agree. I'll get on to mine in a minute. Thor, Love and Thunder. I think, One. I'm just going to say with Miss Marvel, the reason why I love it so much is because obviously all all that, um, um, my my head's broke. Why is my head broke? What What's her uh, name? Uh, Kamala uh, Khan. Kamala Khan, there we go. All Kamala Khan is is like us, geek. A geek who likes superheroes. Ends up getting powers. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, just if you get an antique bracelet from a family member, put it on and you'll have powers. Exactly. There and then uh, you can't really talk about Thor because you haven't seen it. And then the last two I haven't released yet. No. So, my opinion, WandaVision is probably the third, second or third best series. Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, I've I've talked about before with Nate especially. He wasn't a huge fan. It felt I felt like it tried to do too much. The villains weren't that compa compelling. And we actually didn't get to spend that much time with the lead two characters, in my opinion. Some good stuff in it, but not great. Loki, absolutely amazing. There was one episode where they were dicking about in, um, it was I think it was episode three or episode four, they were just on one planet and nothing, the, the TV, the, what's the word, the plot of the show didn't really advance, nothing really advanced. We got a little bit of character work, but not really much happened. It's the episode where he, he goes away with Lady Loki and what have you. Black Widow, I think it's fine. It's good. It's a good action movie. It's really well directed by, uh, I can't remember her name, uh, but uh, Kate Shortland, I think it is. I really did enjoy that. Not a huge fan of the Taskmaster stuff and the Dracov stuff, but I really did enjoy, obviously, meeting Florence Pugh's Yelena and then getting to have Scar Jo back and William Hurt before he sadly passed away as Thaddeus Ross. Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, which we'll talk about in a little while. Shang-Chi, my favourite movie of Phase 4. Love that film. I've watched it like five times now and I still can't get enough. It's almost as good as some of the best in Phase 1, 2 and 3 for me. Uh, Eternals, have some problems with it. I felt like it tried to do too much and it was a bit too out there. And um, I don't want to spoil the film, but I thought we were going to stick with this huge cast of characters for the rest of like the MCU. But something changes and the villains weren't that compelling i suppose but i love seeing that we're getting the celestials and big entities like that and eternity and and everything coming soon hopefully 
um, and I can't wait to see more Erisham. Uh, Hawkeye, really enjoy it. Smaller scale show. I like the first episode where we see Kate um, in the back of New York. I like that we've got D'Onofrio back as Kingpin. Echo was okay, if not serviceable, uh, as, along with Fra Free and his character that I can't remember, the Russian dude. Uh, Renner is great in this, and I love that they adapted the Mac Fraction run with his earpiece and let him go in death. Really enjoyed that. And obviously, Hayley Steinfeld, who's probably going to be the leader of the Young Avengers, as Kate Bishop. Who I really, really enjoyed as well. Uh, no Way Home. I, my opinion soft, softened on this film. I, I think um, it's more of an 8, out, eight out of 10 now for me. I've watched it a couple of times. and I still don't think it's a well-made movie. I, I, I think it tries the plot's very thin and there's a lot of problems with it. But as an overall spectacle movie, a bit like Endgame, it really does kick in. As I said... Um, to, to Nate before and I've said to family members before I think the first time I watched it the emotional stuff in it worked for me and, and the cameos and everything didn't and then the second time the opposite was was true and then I ended up hitting um, the the third uh, the third act now the third time I watched it both worked for me so it's a little bit better now uh, Moon Knight uh, probably the second best MCU series for me Um really enjoyed it all the way through the finale was a little bit rushed and some poor cgi but overall i like the character of mark Spector and jake lockley and who who was well we didn't see jake lockley until the end and then the the, the british personality whose name i forget um stephen uh stephen stephen, stephen Grant Grant. and Konshu and all that i really like that stuff and i love egyptian mythology and seeing egyptian gods yeah, and stuff. Bonnie, wag one. yeah and all the memes that came out from oscar isaac really enjoyed it <laughs> Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, my second favourite movie of Phase 4. It's it's not a great MCU movie, but as a Sam Raimi Doctor Strange movie, I love it. And I love all the quirky and weird shit that was going on. And I do think it's better than the first one for me. Miss Marvel, my favourite Disney Plus series. Didn't expect to like it because I'm not huge on coming of age stories and things like that. But the way they do it, the way they really tap into uh, Pakistani culture and the partition and things like that and actually getting to sit with her family and like these characters and like spending time with them each week uh, especially when obi-wan was on at the other side basically on at the same time i really enjoyed that love and thunder not perfect way too many jokes thor is a bit more of a goofball but the stuff i did like was jane and core and all that and then obviously we haven't seen the last two things so that's our opinion on phase four now we're going to move over. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, bring up something about um, Hawkeye because obviously we mentioned the uh, D'Onofrio is yeah. Kingpin. Low key, can we just talk about what an adventure this guy's had as an actor from starting in Full Metal Jacket to uh, this is my rifle, this is my gun, and blowing his brains out. Um, well, blowing the sergeant's brains out then himself. To fucking Jurassic World, where he was a dick, and then Kingpin, where he's the big ass bad guy. He's had such a good run as an actor. Wasn't he also in Men in Black as well? So yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, we all good? What? Bryn? Was he in Men in oh, Black? D'Onofrio. Yeah, he was the one that Dinofra. played uh, the. Uh, you know the guy that was taken over by the cockroach thing. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, Dinofrio has had a hell of a ride, man. He really has. He's really good in Jurassic World as well. But yeah. Also, I just want to say you just got planted. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, phase five. We're going to kind of just blitz through uh, phase five um, for now. Overall. I, I don't think any of you have really seen most of these announcements, have you? I think you've seen quite a few of them, Nate, but Mike, not in sequential order and kind of seen the next two, three years of the MCU being played out, have you? No. I, with my job, I don't really have much time to actually sit down and relax. And to be fair, I tend to watch the stuff that I like instead of this, like seeing yeah, yeah. what's coming up. I just let you tell yeah, me. Yeah. No, that's cool. <laughs> that's what, that's the point you, of this show. Because then we have... But then we have a discussion about it for like over the phone or something and you, you get really excited about this stuff and I'm like you know what no fair enough because I know at some point it means I'll be going with you to go yeah. see it exactly Um. so yeah phase five uh, I haven't got the best graphic here but let's quickly uh, show you 
around that. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit so you can see it better. Can you boys see it good on your end? On Skype? Uh, Skype is like really behind for me. Let me try it again. Just so you guys can see it at the same time. How's that? Yeah, so uh, so this is your timeline so far. These are US release dates and release dates here. So firstly, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania coming out February 17th. Then we've got, then we've got Secret Invasion in spring. And we've got Guardians uh, coming May 6th. Definitely Echo wait. coming in summer 2023. Obviously a sequel series to Hawkeye with the Echo character. And also, um, we're going to see Daredevil again and D'Onofrio as Kingpin and all that. Then, around the same time, we have Loki Season 2. Pick back up the Loki character um, from there. And wow. what happened with Kang and everything. We're going to the Marvels, uh, reuniting uh, Maria Rambo, aka Photon from WandaVision, uh, Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, and now Miss Marvel from the Miss Marvel series, Kamala Khan, and they're going to go on some adventures maybe with the, the Nega Bands and, and Space and Scrolls and everything like usual. Then we move on to one of the big ones. I know Mike's particularly excited for this one. Blade, played by Mahershala Ali. Um, I am, yeah. I'd like to see how they start. Bring... So we've obviously had the magical world of the MCU. We've had the space and uh, galactic uh, part of the MCU universe. And then we've obviously got the Earthbound stuff. Now we're starting to get into some of the more creepy uh what's the word that i'm trying to think of like midnight suns like weird characters like that like fantasy werewolves and and um vampires, vampires. and all that type of stuff that you've seen other things like underworld and all that ghost rider characters like, sorry about the plane if you can hear it mike might have to say in his end so you've got blade yeah. so you've got iron heart which is um uh, we're going to see her character, uh, Dominique Thorne's playing Riri Williams in Wakanda Forever. That's one thing I forgot to mention in Wakanda Forever. So we're going to see her character in that film and her build her own version of the Iron Man outfit. And then she'll be getting her own six episode series in fall of 2023. Then we move on to a series that I don't see a lot of people asking for, but we're getting it nonetheless. Agatha Coven of Chaos coming uh, end of winter 2023. January 24th, probably around the same time period when they usually release The Mandalorian, like Mandalorian Season 1, Season 2. Starts maybe just before Christmas and ends like around mid-January or some such. Um, it was originally called House of Harkness, Agatha House of Harkness, now it's Coven of Chaos. Not really expecting much from this, but I'll go into it anyway. Then the big boy, your boy over here, is making a comeback. The man himself is making a comeback in his own show. Daredevil Born Again, based on the Born Again run. I can't remember who it's by, but um, I'll make sure I add that in in post. Um, then, uh, and it's 18 episodes as well, by the way. So no more six little tiny episodes like we used to get full 18 episode season. Then we move on to Captain America New World Order, where we pick up with Sam Wilson's character um, after um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Bucky might even be in it. Uh, some other characters as well. Sharon slash Asian 13 slash the Power Broker maybe back. Bunch of characters that you've seen in previous series and stuff. And maybe even a return from Steve. Who knows? And then finally, to end out Phase 5, one that I was kind of shocked by, because I didn't think they'd announce it, Thunderbolts. So we've obviously got the Avengers, we've got the Young Avengers, all the good guys. Now where's Marvel's version of the Suicide Squad? Here it is. Thunderbolts. <coughs> so um, Thunderbolts is going to unite a bunch of bad guys who uh hired mainly by Val, um, Valentina, uh, Allegra de Fontaine or Madame Hydra or whatever you want to call her, played by Julia Louis-Dreyfus that we've seen in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We saw her in Black Widow. We're probably going to see her in more stuff as well, um, recruiting her team. Uh, you mentioned the biggest one that she showed up. Which there. one? She was in Hawkeye. Oh, yeah, she was in Hawkeye as well. I forgot about that. Yeah, she's Kate's mum. No, she's not. No, she not? from Eager. Different character, oh, right, different okay. character. I'm, I'm it's confused. Fine. It's fine. Shut up. But, um, we've got Julia, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who was in both of those. The one with the purple hair, Val. Um, and she's recruiting her own version of the Suicide Squad. And hopefully there's been rumours that 
although we're not getting the Young Avengers movie yet, they may be going up against the Young Avengers. And that... Do you think we might see them in Thunderbolts? Yeah, then? so that, ra- that rounds out Phase 5, all the announcements. We're going to talk a little bit about what each thing is. We won't go into too much detail, <clears> but kind of what's been announced for it. Uh, starting with... Uh, when I can get my bloody Chrome to load back up again. Um, this film right here. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Hell so, yeah. um, obviously the cast that we've seen before is coming back. Uh, uh, I was going to say Scott Lang as Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd as Scott Lang. Uh, Evangeline Lilly as uh, Hope Van Dyne slash the Wasp. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer is coming back as her mother. I can't, I can't remember her name. Janet. Janet Van Dyne, uh, the original Wasp. Michael Douglas is back as the original Lamp Man, as um, Hank Pym. And then there's a couple of other appearances as well. Uh, confirmed to be in this film, Kang, played by Jonathan Majors, the actual version of Kang. There's some footage shown um, in San Diego Comic Con in the hall of Kang being in it. And the only line he gets is, is. Um, Oh, what he says, uh, he says Kang's coming out um, to face Ant Man, and Ant Man says, "You can't kill me. I'm one of the Avengers," or like, "You, you know, I'm one of the Avengers." And then Kang turns around and says, "Have I killed you yet?" Such a cool line. Um, so they got. A... Can we just add obligatory uh, Paul Rudd never ages meme here? Yes. Um... So uh, there's that. I, I'm not sure if if Luis is coming back, played by Michael Pena and David Dasmalchian and all the rest of the cast that were in the last films for that. Um, also coming back um, is the character of Cassie Lang, and she seems to be playing either Sting or Stature. Uh, I'll get the poster up in a minute that shows her character. But this time she won't be played by Emma Furman, who played her in Endgame. She will actually be be played by Catherine Newton who most people have seen in like Freaky or Blockers uh, or Blockers as it's called and stuff like that so um, they recast that actress after Endgame because they wanted somebody who was a little bit more star powered so um, oh sorry pressed the wrong button um, so that is your cast obviously Kang's in it as I say Bill Murray is also supposed to be in it as well uh, we don't know what character he's supposed to be playing, but he's definitely in it, and it looks like they're going to be going more quantum realm shenanigans. I think it was either Ramp Man 2 or something. We saw a, a mini city within the quantum realm in some sort of image or whatever. And um, it looks like that might be where they're going. Um, uh, I just want to say, uh, just quickly on that point, thanks to my dad. He's just said, good show, boys. Going to get back to work now. Work's building up. Talk to you later. So um, thanks for that, dad. Um Anyway, where was I? And the other thing that I forgot to mention is, is Modoc is going to be making his appearance in it, his first appearance. I watched the Modoc series with Pat Oswalt. Wasn't a huge fan. It was quite funny, but not great. Uh, kind of felt a bit robot chickeny, but um, the actual character of Modoc, who tends to be an Iron Man villain, is in this, and it looks like they may be bringing back Corey Stoll, who obviously played Jail Jacket in the first film, to play him. To play uh, Yellow Jacket, uh, to play Modok because he gets yeah. kind of like deformed when he goes into the quantum realm. He turns into that little blip, and then he will become Modok, and he'll be like an underling of Kang and and what have you. And Kang looks like he's going to be the overarching villain of Phase Five and even Phase Six. So that's a lot of information. Oh, fuck! I'm on camera. Why? What did you just do? I just celebrate because I've just got sex oh, from my mum. I thought I thought you were celebrating Ant Man and all that, but um, no, my baby cousin's born. Nice. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna quickly uh, ask you guys what you think of uh, Ant Man coming, obviously in uh, February this year, uh, February 2023. Um, that all sounds good. Another adventure with Ant Man. Normally, Ant Man films tend to be like side capers they don't tend to be like huge event movies or things that you have to see they're like fun little refreshes away from like the larger mcu universe but this one looks like it's very much tied into the wider narrative and the next kind of like end game of things so uh who wants to ta- who wants to discuss quantum mania what they're excited for and things like that first who wants to take it oh uh, yeah I'll go on then, Mike. i'll just pop this up here uh because it's not going to be very long. Um, 
As you, uh, Basically. Just, just quickly, I was just going to say, as you can see here, his, his stature or stinger down here with the uh, purple outfit on, and then you can see a menacing Kang in the back on that poster. But yeah, carry on, Mike. Sorry. Uh, seen the other Ant Man films, absolutely loved them. I love Paul Rudd as an actor because I've seen him in a few other films besides the Ant Man films from years back. Yeah. Um, and I do, I enjoy the character he's played in Ant Man. I enjoy his comedy, and it's just, it's that those films always seem like they're good fun. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing cool. it. Uh, Nate, any thoughts, mate? Love Ant Man, love Ant Man One, love Ant Man Two. Uh, nothing to say apart from I'm looking forward to seeing this. Cool. Uh, nothing to add about Modoc or. Um, uh, no idea where it is. So. Or uh, maybe that we're getting Corey Stoll back, who plays Yellow Jacket in the first film. I thought yeah, he was dead. it's supposed to be dead, but um, it, where he disappeared into that quantum realm, apparently, uh, I'll I get your picture of Modoc in case you don't know what he looks like. He looks like this. He was in the Avengers game. He's this character, the one that sits in the sits in the chair, essentially. So uh, apparently, people think um, he's going to be playing that character because he'll be all deformed and everything after being like sucked into the quantum realm. So. Um, yeah, that. so that that's pretty much everything on, on Ant-Man. I'll just pop it back to me. It's a film we're really looking forward to. We should get a trailer soon, hopefully at D23 in September, because it's only been like five months then uh, till release. Um, so next we're going to move into another series called uh, the first Disney Plus series of um, uh, Phase 5. I couldn't remember what the word was then. Um, and that is this one needs to work. Uh, come on. Simple as that. Come on. It's been a mess. There we go. Here. Secret Invasion. So obviously this picks up with Nick Fury. Uh, Cobra Smulders went on stage and talked a little bit about what the show is going to be about. Um, about that. Uh, although there's this good set of scrolls led by Talos and Ben Mendelsohn, who's also re reappearing in this from Captain Marvel. Nick Fury is also going to be in it, who we haven't seen since Far From Home, Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, Maria Hill's back, played by Kobe Smulders. Um, we're also getting uh, an unknown character, played by Amelia Clark, And we're also getting an unknown character, played by Olivia Coleman as well. So this is a stacked, oh, God. stacked series for quality actors and actresses. Whether you, whether you like the actors or actresses is a different question, but they are good at what they do. Um, so... Yeah, there's not much to really say on this series. You you saying Olivia Coleman could do anything other than condescending bitch? Oh, it depends on what film you watch her in, I suppose. <laughs> but um, yeah, Secret Invasion. Any any thoughts, boys? Uh, Nick Fury as a character in general, I've liked in every film that I've seen him in. So yeah, this will be interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely give it a watch and. You know, after, later on in the future yeah, yeah. when it's out and I've seen it, and you know, I'll give my in-depth opinion then. But I'm I'm looking forward to that. It sounds pretty good. Oh, okay, yeah, sounds good. Hey, right. uh, Samuel L. Jackson, amazing. He's a bad motherfucker. Uh, Kobe Smulders, Robin uh, Shabatsky herself. You know, anybody who's watched How I Met Your Mother will know that reference. Yep. she's amazing. Uh, Amelia Clark, amazing. I was looking forward to it until you mentioned Olivia Coleman. Uh, just, just to add to that cast as well, we've got uh, Carmen Jogo as well, who's who's pretty well known. She was in films like The Purge, Anarchy, and stuff like that. Kingsley Benadire, who's a British actor that's appeared in the OA, and he was also in a film called One Night in Miami about uh, I can't remember what the film, but uh, Muhammad Ali, um, Sam Cooke. James Brown, the NFL player, and I can't really the other one. And Malcolm X, played by Kingsley Benedict, are all in one room talking about civil rights and stuff. Really good film. Uh, obviously, Olivia Coleman and Amelia Clark, and two other returning characters who I forgot to mention. Martin Freeman is back as Everett Ross from the Black Panther movies and, and Civil War and stuff. And Don Cheadle was back as Rhodey before he gets his own series. So, 
looks like there's going to be a lot of uh it's supposed to be like a, a political well, i don't know if it's a political thriller but it's supposed to be a bit of a uh, a thriller type of movie where um you don't know who's who because anybody could be a scroll uh you can trust people and then they might betray you and whatever um so anything else to add boys Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry. Go on, I was just going to say, uh, you mentioned Rhodey coming back, and uh, who else did you mention? Uh, Everett Ross, Martin Freeman. Yeah. Uh, it just makes me wonder, are we going to see Rescue at all, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow playing Pepper? Could do. She's still around. It's just whether we get... Same with Happy Hogan. Are we going to see Happy Hogan again after Spider-Man? No. It all depends on... Um... Whether they can get Gwyneth Paltrow back, and obviously Favreau could do a cameo. I mean, Favreau's busy as well with Mandalorian and shit like that. But yeah, I I, I don't know. Um, when it comes to that, could be a few years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything, anything to add, Mike? Before we move on. Uh, hell of a cast. Sounds like it's. I know I don't sound very excited, but it sounds like it's going to be interesting. But it's, I'll have to, you know, get when we get more information near the time of its release and stuff, and I can make a better decision then. But no, it's it's definitely something I'm interested Good. in now. Good. Um. Yeah. So we're just going to move on to the next thing. I'm just going to close all these tabs quick, which turns out is, um, the Echo series. I think Echo and Guardians of the Galaxy are coming out at kind of the same time. I'm not going to touch much on this because I, I have no clue what they're doing. All we know is that um, the actress who played Echo is coming back, whose, whose name I forget um, off the top of my head, but she's coming back to play Maya Lopez. Um, Alaka Cox is her name. Uh, she's coming back to play Maya Lopez, um, a.k.a. Echo, from the Hawkeye series. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio is back as Kingpin. Um Azar McLaren is back as her dad that you see in Hawkeye, the one that dies. But so probably going to be flashbacks and stuff like that. And then the big one is the man himself, Charlie Cox, is back as Matt Murdock slash Daredevil. So obviously he'll, he'll be appearing in the She-Hulk series, which makes a lot of sense because they're both lawyers. And then he's going to appear in this as well. Uh, as for other cast, it looks like there's going to be quite a lot of uh, Native American representation not many act actors i know from much but it looks like it's going to be pretty good uh it's going to be directed by uh sydney freeman i believe who i don't uh who i don't know that much on i don't know who the showrunner is i'm just going to double check but um it follows the events of hawkeye in new york city M maya lopez returns to her hometown where she must come to terms with her past reconnecting with her native american roots and embrace her family and community is anything like miss marvel with the addition of Daredevil and Bulls and Fisk, then I'm really looking forward to this. What about you two? I am looking forward oh, to then. this. Uh, I wonder if Kit Harrington's going to be in it. Oh, wait, it wasn't Kit Harrington. Everyone just said it looked like him. <laughs> Which one's that? Uh, well, uh, um, oh, her friend. I, the one that, didn't didn't yeah, he die um, in Hawkeye? The Russian dude. No, not the Russian dude. Um, the guy who's played by Fra yeah, B, whatever he, his he name was, is, the he, Irish yeah, guy. He, he, he was a brother or, or whatever, like she, he betrayed her or something. I, can't, I, I don't think he died. I thought he died at the end of the series, but obviously not. I don't think he died. Uh, but, I mean, I'm looking forward to this. Um, the person who plays Echo as well, isn't she actually deaf yes, as well? Yes. Yeah. I, I think it's funny because I've mentioned this before. Not funny as in like, haha, but it's good that Disney seems to be getting a lot more represented with uh, deaf uh, people, uh, people who are amputees uh, and stuff like that, which I think is amazing that they're getting these actors. They could easily get somebody who can hear things and just say, oh, I'll just play your deaf. But it always comes and get across a bit insensitive when you watch yeah. it. Exactly right. Um, Mike? Yeah. Defo looking well, forward to this. Well, this is the cause... one series you've actually seen, haven't you? Yeah, uh, the, from the Hawkeye series, because she is such an amazing actor, right, and ridiculously skilled. And I'm looking. I actually am really looking forward to this to see, you know, where the character goes from, where it was left 
Dog for yeah. Hawkeye. So it's like I am definitely looking forward to this. I will be watching that as soon as I can. Cool. Uh, I just double checked that um, she she stabbed him with one of Hawkeye's arrows, but I don't think. Um, no, I don't think he, he actually died. And the same thing goes for Kingpin. I know a lot of people when we were watching the uh, the show thought um, he had actually died, and everybody was like, "Why are you bringing back Vincent D'Onofrio for one for a one off thing?" Bloody bloody blah. blah, blah. Um, Another minute. Uh, can, can we just, can we just for a second? Uh, it seems like on the stream my camera's fucking up really yeah, bad. Yeah, everything's going. Is it going a bit funny? I'll just finish it off on Echo and then we'll take a quick break because I need the toilet and stuff. And then we'll come back to finish phase phase five and phase six, and then we'll get to some of the other bits which we, we might have to kind of speed through. So just just uh, what what were we saying? Um, yeah, people were saying about Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin and vice versa um that he was dead why did you bring him back it's a waste to bring back um one of the best parts of the dead and netflix series just to kill him off but he doesn't if you've read the comics you know stuff behind behind the echo series i mean king king's a strong fucking person it in takes in, to... in the comic run that the echo thing is inspired by he just wears an eye patch because she actually shoots him in the comics so um anybody who'd done a little bit of research afterwards kind of knew that was coming anyway but um, yeah, uh, the the streams may be a little bit all over the shop a minute, but um, and we'll take a break after we finish the phase five stuff. Uh, but yeah, so uh, what is next? I think it's Guardians Volume Five. So uh, Volume Three, not Volume Five. We only had four of them. God, are we going in the yeah, future? We are. Uh, just get this down. Right, so coming up next, Iron Man is showing back up in Avengers Endgame Part 2. Might as well, at this point. <laughs> They've made the time travel machine and Chris Evans is reprising his role as Captain America. Woo! Uh, hopefully this doesn't go... Oh yeah, I knew it was going to do that. But I'll have to do for now. Try a camera image. I'll put some Guardians up on the screen. That's the Guardians logo. It's very pixelated. But um, yeah... Obviously, same cast coming back. We've got some new people added in. We've got the High Evolutionary played by... I can't remember the, the, the guy's name, but he was in Peacemaker with James Gunn. So James Gunn just brought him across. High Evolutionary deals with a lot of like perfection, like making the perfect human being or the perfect... Is he the golden guy that you no, see No, that's too? what I'm going to get on to in a minute. Um, he's a different oh, character. Right. He was the one that made Rocket enter... Oh, right, uh, okay. Amorphic and uh, James Gunn has confirmed this is it. This is it. Like this version of the Guardians and um, uh, this version that we see now. That's it. This is the last one. Not that they're all going to die, but this is the last um, time we're going to see them all together as a team for a little while at least. So there's that we've got the high evolutionary coming in played by uh i'll try and find the guy's name he's from peacemaker which i am yet to see um and we've also got the guy you were talking about in the gold person adam warlock who's being played by will polter who a lot of people know has been in uh is it Pot no, yeah. polter i don't think yeah. it's somebody else then. he was he was the guy that he's been in uh black mirror he was in we're the millers he was in Oh, a bunch and bunch of stuff. I'll see if I can get his image up, just so you know who I'm talking about. But it's this dude. Him. And that's what he used to... He was in one of the Narnia movies as well. So I'll just close that and open it in a new window. So there's, it's him. He's playing. He's playing oh. Adam Warlock. So he's got the Soul Gem, not the Soul Stone, the Soul Gem, which are two totally different things. Apparently, he's buffed up a lot for the role. Oh, he was also in the um, with Maze Runner. Yes, that was the other thing like I was that. trying to remember. Yeah, but yeah. So he's he's pretty well known. He's going to be playing Adam Warlock. He's going to be one of the big additions to this and to the the, the space realm that the Guardians are really well known for. Um. My stream has kind of frozen quite a bit. Maybe I need to maybe stop doing this. Maybe you'll just have to watch it through the stream, boys. Um, but the internet's internet's having a bit of a mare tonight. But we'll get through it. So uh, there's that. He's got a bunch of other. Who else have we got? Oh, and uh, we've also got the same cars coming back. 
This time, Gamora is the leader of the Ravagers. So she's taken over from uh, Yondu as the leader of the Ravagers. Rest in peace, Mary Poppins. Yeah. Uh, we've also got uh, Elizabeth Debicki coming back as the gold lady, i.e. Shah from uh, the Sovereign. Sean Gunn is back as uh, Kraglin, uh, the guy that they always hang around with that got the fin from Yondu. He's actually James Gunn's brother. Uh, Sylvester Stallone is back as Stacker Gord. Uh, he was one of the Ravagers that you saw at the end. He looks like Sylvester Stallone. He's not got some fun weird face on like he does for King Shark and Suicide Squad. And then we've got Chuck Woody Uwuji as uh, the High Evolutionary, a powerful human whose abilities rival that of cosmic be beings. He described Iwuji described the character as narcissistic, sociopathic, but very charming, adding that there was something very Shakespearean about him. There's something very emotionally dark about him, and he's a lot of fun on top of all of that. And finally, the last one that I'm, uh, the last couple that I'm going to add to this is Maria Bakalova is actually voicing Cosmo the Space Dog. So we're going to get Cosmo with actual voice and stuff, which if you've seen the Guardians of the Galaxy game that released a couple of years ago, uh, Cosmo was a huge thing in that. The last time I think we saw Cosmo was in both was Guardians Volume 2 and then maybe Guardians the one before that. And then also just in... Un Wait, Cosmo the Cop. The dog, oh. yeah, the dog that wears. Yeah, it was in it was in Guardians One in the collection. I know that much, but apparently it says here he mm. appeared in Guardians Two as well. But anyway, and then Daniela Mel Melchior, who played Ratcatcher in the Suicide Squad, James Gunn's one with Peacemaker and and all that. Um, she's cast in an unknown role. So that's basically everything we know. Same cast as before. They're all still together. Not much happens with them in for Love and Thunder, so they literally just get picked straight up from Endgame essentially with this. And the pr premise is as follows: Peter Quill, still reeling from the loss of Gamora, must rally, rally the Guardians of the Galaxy on a mission to defend the universe and protect one of their own. That one of their own could be Rocket. There's a lot of rumor that Rocket is going to die in this one because it's him fighting it, fighting off against his creator. So. I love the the last two. I think the Guardians make anything they're in better. The, the, the writing for the Guardians is always miles better. So, uh, what about you guys? Love the Guardians films. I have done for a long time. Um, def I'm looking for. I'm actually looking forward to this one because I may actually go watch this by myself when it comes out, and then again with you later on or something like that. I don't know. We'll see nearer the time, but no, looking forward to this damn sure. Cool. Uh, Nate? Give me one second. Okay. Give me one second. Cool. Uh, I'll just pop it back to uh, me and Mike. You don't need to change it over. Oh, okay. You're going to change it over. Can I just say, I am looking forward to getting another one of Oh, these. cool. Uh, are they on camera? Yeah, yeah. On? You should be able to see them. This is volume one and volume two of the awesome mix. So let's, uh, I, I can't wait for volume three. Um, I hope they get some good songs in it. I love Guardians uh, so much so that I bought the vinyls for the uh, actual soundtrack. Um, but yeah, I, I can't wait to see Chris Pratt back. Love him. I think he's amazing. Cool. Anything else? That's, that's all I could think about. Uh, the only other thing I, I do want to mention... <laughs> Over here is that live at Comic Con, Chuck, Chuck Woody Awuji did actually come out in his full costume as the High Evolutionary, and it looks pretty sick to be fair. Let me just pop it up on the screen there, hopefully. And I've just got to move it over. That's what he looks like. Um, should hopefully get it on the stream in a minute. But um, yeah, he looks really good. He did this whole speech and everything, walked through the crowd. It looks really good. If I could find the video, I'd play the video. but we haven't really got time for that at the moment. Um, so yeah, Guardians. I I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I I'm a huge fan of the first two. I know a lot of people aren't fans of the second one. The fact that we're finally getting Adam Warlock almost six years later, um, and all the returning characters. And this one looks like it's going to be a lot more emotional than the ones that we've had before. It looks like the team's going to finally break up and they're going to be put through like their sternest test they've ever been put through. So. Um, yeah, and obviously the Adam Warlock thing, probably going to start out as a villain and end up becoming a good guy. I want to see how that works. And we're actually not too far away from this one. It comes out in May. It's like 10 months. So not long now at all. So 
and countdown is on. Next, um, the next one we're going to be talking about is, uh, I believe, let me just get up the list again. I'm trying to remember what it is. Oh, uh, Loki season two. Uh, so I just need to get an image for this. So I'll just pop it on to uh, this tricam. Uh, Loki season two. Nate, talk, talk a little bit about uh, what you liked about Loki season one. And then kind of talk about what you're expecting season two to kind of be about. Why me? I'm too tired and I need a pee. Um, Just quickly. What I enjoyed about season one, I um, the TVA I thought was a really good addition, especially seeing the um, what was supposed to be Kang, but wasn't, wasn't it? The three robots. Uh, obviously, Owen Wilson is amazing. Uh it's just a good story it is a good story especially seeing as loki falls in love with himself which is basically a fan very fic. egotistical thing <laughs> egotistic fanfic sort of thing uh what else did you say what i want to see in the next one yeah more fighting i was a bit disappointed with season one that there wasn't much combat and fighting in it cool I don't know what to no, talk about. No, that's it. Sorry. If you want to go and take a break, I'm going to give give Mike a chance to talk. We'll, we'll just cover the end of Phase 5. We'll have a quick break. Mm. We'll talk about some bits. And then we'll finish Phase It's fine. I'll wait here until the end of Phase cool. 5. Um, Mike. Loki Season 2. You, yes. you obviously haven't seen the first one yet. Uh, the last time you've nope. probably seen it was Endgame. Uh, last time you've seen Loki is Endgame because it was that Loki that disappeared into a portal when they were back in time. That's what this series yeah. is about. Uh, I I really like the first one. Are you looking forward to this? And uh, what would you like to see? Oh, I can't really talk about what would you like to see in season two because you haven't seen it. I mean, I need to catch up and watch the first season before. I was about to say the first question should be: Are you going to watch the well, first yeah, season? Well, yeah, that's true. Season? <laughs> I mean, maybe I don't know. Honestly, uh, there's a lot of stuff on there that I obviously haven't seen currently and coming up that I probably won't yeah. see. Um, not through that I don't want to, it's just that a case of I will forget and then just not see it do for my own ignorance because I've forgotten. Yeah. No, I, get you. I mean, I mean, hopefully I'll see it. I mean, hopefully I'll actually sit down and once I've seen a lot of the films that I need to see, yeah, yeah, I'll then I'll then start watching like the series that like kind of kind of in between this in the in between the movies and stuff like that and then kind of get my full aspect and broaden my horizons instead of watching the usual same stuff i do well it's up to you isn't it you don't have to rush stuff but um yeah just that that's that's all i really wanted from you i'm just gonna pop back to myself and well the three of us uh, i'm going to talk a little bit about loki uh, i really like the first season obviously the kang stuff uh, regardless, all the stuff with Lady Loki. It's it's a shame because Mike hasn't seen it, and we, me and Nate are kind of talking about some of the big things that happen in it. But it's hard to talk about season. Two oh, you could. About... You know, I'm not bothered if you end up saying spoilers about something I haven't seen because I'm at some point I will probably sit down and watch it. So I'm not spoilers. Thanos got Thanos got exactly. I probably yeah, would have forgotten by then. That was such a good reference. I'm pretty sure once I watched it, I messaged Bryn straight after and was like, "The Thanos got well, in it." <laughs> Me, personally, I'm looking forward to more multiversal hijinks with him and Lady Loki if if they're together because he kind of gets separated from her at the end and then Kang kind of takes over. I'm looking forward to more TBA hijinks, more messing with the sacred timeline and stuff like that. Uh, more on Kang because I think this is the series that's really going to fill you in on, on more the different versions of Kang throughout the multiverse and stuff like that and, and just more stuff with Tom Hiddleston because he's perfect at this role. And although like season one I had to do a lot of catch up to get him the same character growth as the original Loki did, and they kind of had to rush it, I I'm already attached to this character. I'm attached after seeing season one. It was like my third or fourth favorite MCU show from Phase Four. So I can't wait. Uh, anything else to add before we move on again? No, I think I've said everything that I can say about it. To be fair, cool. Uh, I think. Uh, the next one is uh, just get rid of Guardians. I think the next one might be Captain Marvel. So, uh, boys, what did you? If, if I think you've both seen Captain Marvel, haven't you? The first one. Yeah. 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 What did you think about the first one? Just starting like the the time period and things like that. Um, did you enjoy it? 
because I, I don't think I've ever asked either of you your opinions on the first one. I did enjoy the first one. Um, a couple from what it's been a long time since I've seen it because I saw it by myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did enjoy the film. A couple holes in the plot uh, kind of ruined a couple little bits for me. Um, but other than that, it, I enjoyed the film overall. Cool. Uh, no? I liked it. I was a bit pissed off with how uh, Nick Fury lost his eye. I thought it was a bit yeah, meh. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, it was a bit shit. The CGI for the creature wasn't that good either. Uh, apart from that, I do like the movie, especially when Carol Danvers goes crashing into a blockbuster, which is kind of what happened to the blockbuster yeah, in real life. Not in the South, it really helped with that film. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Captain Marvel 2, uh, we didn't really touch much on the cast of Loki and stuff because I think it's pretty much the same. I don't know if they've made any additions. They may have. I'm sorry if we skipped over it. But Captain Marvel 2, uh, as we as we alluded to earlier when we kind of talked about Miss Marvel, it's got three of them. It's got Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. It's got Photon, Maria Rambo, the daughter of Monica Rambo, who's her friend that you see in Captain Marvel, the first Captain Marvel. And then obviously Kamala Khan and Miss Marvel from the Miss Marvel series. It's I, I, I literally do not know anything about the plot, what's happening. All I know is literally just that. So I'm going to have to do... A little bit of research. It's obviously called The Marvels, not Captain Marvel 2. They've changed the name. Um, I don't think they've really filled out anything else other than that. I don't think they've got a plot. Sam, Samuel L. Jackson is back in it. There's Nick Fury, apparently. And it's got uh, a lot of the Miss Marvel cast, like her older brother, her mother, her dad. Uh, Zor Ashton has been uh, cast as a villain, and that's all I can tell you so far so th there's not really much to add on to this we know the date is coming out it's july 28th 2023 so not pretty much almost a year from now um anything to add about this are you looking forward to the team up of the, the three separate characters that we've seen in different stuff come together to fight off some sort of villain I think it's going to be good uh i'm looking forward to it that's all i've got to really say about it good. to be honest yeah, I'm kind of the same. To be fair, I it, it's it's the one thing about new movies and stuff coming out. It's hard to say you're looking forward to something until you see oh. it. Yeah, yeah, it's the same with me. To be honest, I, I'm exactly the same. There's not really much to say except I'm excited to see these three characters come together and fight some villain because I like them all separately. So I'm probably going to enjoy them all when they come together and and the band and like the first Avengers where they all get to play off each other and and stuff like that. I, I think will be pretty good. The next one. Uh, I just need to double check what it is. I think it might be our favourite. Yes, it is. It's Blade. So I want. Yeah. Who wants to Who wants to take this first? To kind of talk us through your um, what why you like Blade if you do like Blade or why you don't. Um, the the fact I'll start. the fact that Wesley Snipes is being changed from Mahershala Ali, who, which I think to me is kind of an upgrade he's a better actor whether it'll be the character will be better within the films i don't know but who uh no you want to take it go on i'll start never watched blade not looking forward to it because i don't know anything about it there we go mike oh, mike you go mate <laughs> i'm going for a piss i'll be back in a second uh well okay i watched the wes i watched the wesley snipes blades one two and yep. three um, I think I actually start my first Blade film. I think was actually Blade Two because my parents have it on DVD. Yeah, yeah. So I just basically picked it up one day, put it on, and was just like engulfed. Because you know, Bryn, you know, I like wearing skulls and all that type of stuff. And and you like werewolves that kind and that, stuff like that as well. So. Yeah, I like werewolves, vampires, that stuff as well. I am more inclined to that type of thing. So anything to do with essentially anything to do with that like underworld a massive fan of those films um it's not too sure personally if i prefer this new gentleman over wesley slipes playing blade but i can make my decision finally when i see the yeah. film i could be com i could be completely wrong and uh, you said brent saying that it could be an upgrade but i don't know i grew up with wesley snipes blade 
I still watch the movies now, still thoroughly yeah. enjoy them. So, and there was actually a TV series with Blade as well, wasn't there? Yeah, wasn't it one with him, I... him and Whistler or something? I can't remember what it was now, but I, I remember there being a can't... series. I can't remember either because I never actually watched the series. I wanted to, but never got around to I it. I was never around. I was never actually either at home, awake, or could remember when it was meant to be on TV. Um, so, but no, I'm actually I'm really looking forward to it because obviously he's now coming to the MCU, so it can't be. I don't think it's going to be as dark as what Wesley Snipes' Blade films are because it's the MCU and they don't do that type of thing. The only thing they said they're um, probably going to do an R rating thing for is Deadpool. That's it, or an 18 rating is Deadpool. So everything else expected to be a 12, 12 A at most. Yeah, so uh, I've I've got mixed feelings about this because I'm when I hear Blade, I think Wesley Snipes, dark. Well, to be fair, in my opinion, those vine- those movies aren't they are darker than your average movie but to me they're not dark they're just good fun um cool. i don't know i've I'd, i'll have to wait and see and then make a decision after all, all i'm going to add to this conversation i need to add something on to that on. real quick first if i knew it was werewolves i would have watched it i love werewolves yeah it's, it's vampires there's no werewolves in yeah there's no werewolves in wesley snipes blade it's literally all vamp- vampires yeah well i still love vampires i love like anthropy i love vampirism it's, it's as well. a vampire, I mean... he's a vampire hunter he's like half human half vampire he's like a daywalker and he should... vampires. how have i never watched this before because i love that sort of stuff van helsing is one of my favorite he's stories. essentially marvel essentially... van helsing isn't he man? yeah well essentially the best way i can describe it um just quickly for you is blade's mom when she was pregnant with him got bitten he was born he became part he was part vampire part human the only weakness he has is the thirst for blood otherwise he has all the advantages of being a vampire and he can walk in daylight um you need to watch the films so i don't i would i'm not going to say any more on it but that's just the premise uh so all i'm going to add to this um is what's here on on wikipedia and whatever mahershala ali was in the mcu before in the Netflix series, he played Cottonmouth in the Luke Cage series, the villain in the first series. But because we don't know how they're going to go about that with canon, are they going to reboot Daredevil in the MCU just for the same actors or what? But basically, he's now upgraded to playing Blade. Um, we announced him at Mahershala Ali as Blade Comic Con 20, pardon me, 2019. He had a voice cameo at the end of Eternals where Dane's going for the Ebony Blade. Um, and that's it. And it's being directed by Bassam Tariq, who previously did uh, Mogul Mowgli. So I, I, I don't know anything about that. I don't know whether they're going to give him a British accent, because originally he was he had a British accent in the comics, and he was British, and he was part of like the British version of the Avengers. I can't remember what they called it. There is an actual name for it, but I can't remember what it's called. But um, yeah, so I, I I gather not, especially if you're going to have um, an American actor like a Mahershala Ali playing it, it makes sense. Uh, but that's it. That's all we really know. There's not much else to talk about when it comes to Blade. All we know is is we're really excited for this. I'm really excited for this. Mike especially because I know he's a huge fan of the Blade movies. And hopefully, once Nate's watched the trilogy, when he can get his hands on it, because I think they might be on Netflix. Um, if they're on Netflix, I might watch them. Then we can talk a little bit more about it the closer we get. So that's Blade. Uh, we're just going to quickly uh, move on to the next thing. Uh, I just keep having to double check this. Ironheart. I know we're probably not going to stop on this too much, similar to Blade, because we we can't really talk about it considering we know bugger all about it so far. Um, obviously follows uh, Riri Williams uh, slash Ironheart. She's like a female Iron Man. She builds her own. She's inspired by Tony Stark to build her own Iron Man suit. Um, and she becomes Iron Heart, um, essentially. And she's being played by Dominic Thorne, who will obviously appear in Black Panther World Kind of Forever. And she's also been in If Beale Street Could Talk and Juice and the Black Messiah. So I, I, I really can't say too much on this. Um, anything you guys want to add to that? don't know anything about it sounds interesting from what we know at the moment i, I assume roadie's probably going to turn up turn up in it at some point as well so 
Yeah, so from what you've told us, it's to me it sounds interesting, and I'm I'd like to know how she goes about to do how like how she goes about making her own suit and trying it out and everything else. Would it would it kind of be running along the lines of Iron Man one, you know, where he's mucking around with the thrusters and stuff like that to figure out how to fly? Like, I don't want them to do exactly the same as what they did in Iron Man yeah. one, but I feel like there kind of has to be that little homage or little scene of her trying out stuff. Yeah, is it going to be like Whiplash's suit? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think in part of the Black Panther trailer, you actually see her build the suit because she's in a she's in a um in one one of Shuri's sciency rooms, and she's sat there welding. She welds the actual heart that you can see on the logo. So I I I, I don't know if you you're going to see it beforehand, and then the series will explore her backstory and how she got to know Shuri and the rest of them. I haven't got Scooby Doo when it comes to that. All I can add is what is said on here. Um, she'll be reprising her role from Wakanda Forever. Chinaka Hodge is hired as her head writer. She's previously done uh, Snowpiercer on Netflix and a couple of other things as well. Um, uh, Ryan Coogler is going to be producing it or co developing it. Um, so obviously he's going to introduce it in his film. So he's going to have a little bit of say on how. That's represented. Six episodes again. Um, oh. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it'd be different to actually have a character introduced in a movie and then a new character be introduced in a movie and then have their own series, like, not too far after, because most of it has been the other way around. Yeah. It's been set them up in a series like Moon Knight and Miss Marvel and all that and then put them in a movie. But that's all we can really talk about for Ironheart, unfortunately. I don't know that much about the character. Um, I need to clue myself up a little bit more on it the closer we get to stuff. But that's our thoughts on Ironheart. Next, I believe, um, is... Um, just let me double check. I think it is Agatha Coven of Chaos. So obviously this was originally called um, Agatha Coven of Chaos. Oh shit, I just closed the wrong wrong uh, thingy. <laughs> uh, new window. Come on, I just closed the wrong Chrome Chrome thing. Um, yeah, it's Coven of Chaos. Catherine Hahn's coming back to play her character Agatha Harkness from uh, the MC the MCU show One Division. Uh, she, in the in the comics, she's not really a big character. She's kind of an old, elderly lady who kind of is a mentor for Wanda when she's going through her problems, and I think it was in the House of M run and stuff. But she's not really a huge character in the comics, so they haven't got really anything to base it off, to be honest. So, um, Nate, you've seen One Division, so you might as well go first. Um, yeah. Are you looking forward to this? Because we literally know nothing about it except that she's coming back. I kind of am because I, I mean, I did call it with One Division that um, she was going to be the big bad because uh, I mean Agnes, Agatha Harkness, yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, I mean you don't cast Catherine Hans to play a good guy ever because she is just the perfect bad guy. You're not wrong. And yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I don't know what they're going to do. Is it going to be set in the past? Because I know with um, uh, obviously the Boston Witch Hunts, that's what they mentioned, isn't it, with Salem Witch Trials? Yeah. Um, I'm just having a look. Apparently it's going to be a dark comedy. I'm just having a look on the One Division tab. It, it was revealed that a dark comedy spin off series was in development with Han returning to reprise her role as Agatha Harkness, along with Schaefer returned, Jack Schaefer, who wrote One Division. And she, I think she was the showrunner as well. Uh, is returning as writer and executive producer. Han's involvement was part of the larger deal she signed with Marvel Studios to reprise the role in one in additional film, series of films. Uh, Agatha Covenant Chaos will premiere in late 2023 or early 2024. So obviously, Mike, you you haven't seen uh, One Division, so you can't really talk no. about this because you know nothing about it. Um, obviously, I mean, it sounds from what Nate said, it sounds interesting. I wonder if they're gonna kind of give her a bit of a backstory and maybe lead up from backstory to up to One Division. Yeah, know. that's an option. I don't know whether she's just going to... Um, I don't want to say too much about the end of uh, WandaVision. 
for you more than anything because the end is pretty good. Um, <clears throat> but what happens at the end of there uh, kind of has repercussions, and I think she would go on and make her own coven afterwards, maybe. And it's going to be like uh, I don't know how you'd make it a dark comedy, maybe because she's just I've, I'm trying to think how you would do that. But uh, to me, it sounds really good. I, I like the character, the the Agatha all along tune is still a bop like almost 18 months later oh, yeah. i'm sorry but it is and then oh that's a one division theme that's not no the it is, it one is. Yeah. is it who's been messing up everything been Agatha all along yeah anyway i'm not gonna i'm not gonna keep singing and she kills sparky too yeah. Gen genuinely, <laughs> I, I, I like to see Catherine Hahn back, and I do like this character, but I'm just wondering what they're going to do with it. There's not really much you can do for me. So, uh, yeah, that's Agatha Coven of Chaos. We've only got a couple more in Phase 5 to cover now. Um, so let's move back over to the Tricam. I'm pretty sure I know what the next one is anyway. But um, just in case, uh, yep, it is Daredevil Born Again. So, obviously, Daredevil uh, was over at Netflix. Um, a lot of people, a bit like the Snyder Cut, were campaigning, campaigning. MCU, save Daredevil, bring back Charlie Cox, bring back Vincent D'Onofrio. And then we obviously see, saw the She-Hulk trailer. We heard that he was he was in No Way Home as well. Well, we, we saw D'Onofrio turn up as Kingpin and Hawkeye, and then No Way Home, Charlie Cox turned up. We kind of knew something was happening. Then the She-Hulk thing came out. And then Echo, obviously, being tied in in the Hawkeye series, was like, he's going to be coming back. And then, obviously, now he's getting his own run. And, as I say, it's 18 episodes. The longest Mar uh, Marvel, or not even Marvel, Four Disney Plus months. show. I don't know whether they're going to double the episodes up and do two a week. But if they do... I have no do idea. I don't think they will. It depends on how long the episodes are, though. Are they going to release hour-long episodes or only 30 minutes? With 18 episodes, you you think it's going to be 18? Fuck, it'd be uh, difficult. Uh, Go hour and a half. Minutes. Why not two? Why not have 18 fucking Death Devil movies? Because everybody loves Matt Murdock. We've got to have yeah. it. Uh, Mike, have, have you seen anything to do with Netflix Daredevil? No, I haven't. The only Daredevil that I've seen is Ben Affleck. I know, we talked about this earlier, didn't so, we? Yeah, so that's the only Daredevil I've seen. I mean... It's oh, I forgot Ben Affleck was and dead. And that one that you were talking about. Yeah. That's not on cam. Oh, that's it is on, on cam. It's on stream. It's on his stream cam. Yeah, Electra. Yeah. She, Jennifer Garner played Electra in his movie, and she went around a spin-off movie. It's not supposed to be any good. But... Yeah, which, which to be fair, I did enjoy her movie, and I did enjoy, obviously, Ben Affleck's Daredevil. A lot of people didn't at the time, but meh. Um, He's a better Batman. Yeah, he is a better Batman. Um... No, um, I mean I can go back and watch. I can go back and start watching the series. There's a lot of stuff I have to go back and watch, and I'll say it now, saying like I'll go back and watch it, go back and watch it. I'm making no promises that I'm going to watch any of these. If it happens to come up and I actually sit down and watch it, then I will, and then I'll talk about it. But otherwise, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it though because it's a Daredevil movie or sorry series. Um, I haven't watched anything of Daredevil for a long time, so. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I might actually give it a chance to sit down and actually watch it. Cool. Uh, just going to add a little bit more onto that uh, from from what we know from the show, um, and that is uh, in June twenty in uh, in June twenty twenty, Cox was contacted by Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige about reprising his role in Marvel Studios MCU productions. But Feige confirmed in December twenty twenty one that Cox will reprise, reprise the role for Marvel Studios first, doing so in the film Spider Man No Way Home. Additionally, D'Onofrio first reprised his role as Kingpin in Disney Plus series Hawkeye. At that time, Jessica Hennick, who, was portray who portrayed Colleen Wing in the Marvel Netflix series, indicated that Cox had known about the opportunity to reprise the role in Marvel Studios productions years prior. In March 2022, Production Weekly included a Daredevil reboot and their report of upcoming projects in de development for Feige and Chris Gary. This is producers. The series was confirmed to be in development for Disney Plus in late May, with Matt Corman and Chris Ord attached as head writers. I've never known them to do anything else. Uh, the series titled Daredevil Born Again was officially announced that July for an 18 episode first season, with Cox and D'Onofrio confirmed to return, and it's going to premiere on Disney Plus early 2024. 
So I'm really looking forward to this. I cannot wait to get get our teeth back into some Daredevil stuff. I wonder if they're going to bring back um, Deborah Ann Will as Karen Page and uh, the guy who played Foggy Nelson. I think his name's Eldon Henson. He's in the Hunger Games movies. Bring them back. And then maybe eventually we may end up getting the rest of the Defenders and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. I don't know about Iron Fist. They may recast Iron Fist or whatever, but I'm glad we're getting Daredevil. Is all I can say. I'm really happy. And for 18 episodes, it's going to be the longest Disney Plus show we've ever had. So I might have to organise with you at least like once a week for him to come around so I can actually sit down and watch some of these. You've got Disney Plus. <laughs> I'll put you on my account. Yeah, I know, but it was, I could do it on a day off or something. We could actually go down, have a few beers That's and watch. True. That's true. I know you two, a few beers will turn into a few more, and then you'll end up not watching anything and just having a fucking piss up. It, it won't actually, to be fair, because me and Bryn don't actually drink that much. Yep. Not normally. Mm-hmm. Basically, that, that's why Bryn nearly broke his hand when he was drinking. That was a nice help. Uh, that, was, that was a night out for a different occasion. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> but no, to be fair, I could, chances are I could bring a crate to ten to Bryn's house, and I reckon we'd have... If it was a proper night, we'd have about half a crate each, and then we'd call it quits, and that'd yeah. be it. Look, I can't, I can't talk about drinking. I've got the entire booze cabinet behind me, and right next to me, I've got a bottle of fucking Jameson's and a bottle of Malibu. <laughs> right. Anyway, sorry, Brad. But yeah, uh, what's it right. You say? So I was just going to say, like, that's that's it for Daredevil. We're going to move on to one of the last two properties, which is Captain America: New World Order. We're following uh, Sam Wilson's Falcon. Oh, now Captain America. No, Captain That's America. I'm trying to think of. Um, who, who became Captain America in the Falcon and Winter Soldier series, and this is going to follow him. I think it's written by the same people. Um, so I, I wasn't a biggest fan of the first series, so I don't know if that's going to make me enjoy it any more. Um, because I, I didn't really like it. But the, the overall announcement that we're getting a fourth Captain America movie um, and I don't know what that subtitle New World Order means um, at all. I, I don't know a comic run called New World Order or anything, but just the fact that we're getting a new Captain America movie and it's with a new protagonist, Sam Wilson's Captain America, played by Anthony Mackie. What do you guys think? Looking forward to it, because I love Anthony Mackie. He just... The outtakes I've seen on YouTube, like him just going like... Got the, the chair! chair. And stuff like that, I knew you were going to bring that up. <laughs> yeah oh come on man how could i not the the man is in my opinion a brilliant actor and i would i'm looking forward to this i really am cool night <laughs> I, I i thought that would be the one you went and referenced mike uh i'm looking forward to it i like captain america um falcon and the winter soldier is you said it, it had too much stuff going on so hopefully they can focus on just one bad guy I'm going to say this. One person I do want to see show up again is uh, Winter Soldier. Bucky Barnes. I want to see Mr. Bucky. Um, uh, anything else to add before I just read this kind of spiel? And then we move on? No. Nope. Right. Uh, try, uh, put the try cam back up and zoom that in a little bit more. Uh, so this comes to us from Wikipedia. Most of this information is from Wikipedia. They're usually pretty good with stuff that's been done. Uh, it says... In April 2021, a fourth Captain America film was revealed to be in development with a script co-written by Malcolm Spellman and Dallin Musson. The duo previously served as head writer and staff writer, respectively, on the Disney Plus series The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Anthony Mackie joined by the August of the same year to headline the film, reprising his role as Sam Wilson, Captain America. Julius Onar, who the only film I know he's done is uh, The Clover Peel Paradox, which is really bad, apparently. On Netflix and Loose, which I know nothing about, but it looks like it's got a good cast in Tim Roth and Octavia Spencer and Naomi Watts and stuff. So I don't, I don't know anything about this director, but the fact that Malcolm Spellman's coming back to write it from the last, from Falcon and Winter Soldier, a little bit iffy on that, but it will explore the effects of becoming Captain America on Wilson. Captain America New World Order is scheduled to be released on May 3rd, 2024. All I'm going to say is I'm looking forward to it. I love Anthony Mackie as Captain America. Um, I really love, he was the best part of that series, in my opinion. Um, and I can't wait to see more. And hopefully this one's a little bit more 
a little bit better written and I can engage with this character more. And hopefully we do see Bucky or whatever else. Maybe he'll be in the Thunderbolts. We don't know. And speaking of the Thunderbolts, they're the last ones of Phase 5 we're going to talk about. This is the one that probably has the least information on. So we aren't going to stick on this topic for too long. We have a bit of speculation who um, we think is going to be in it. And then we'll round out Phase 5 and then we're going to take a short break. So, uh, Thunderbolts, uh, basically MCU's version of uh, the Suicide Squad. Who do you reckon is going to be in it? So you're thinking like anti-heroes or characters that don't necessarily stray the line of fully good, but sometimes are a little bit more grey. Like morally grey, I should say. Uh, I think Bucky might be a good show. Um... The only one I can think about, and I know it's because I know he's in it, and that's Baron Zemo. Yeah. That's mm. one that I thought you would get. Deadpool is MCU now. Do you think he Depends might show up? Depends when film comes out. That, might, that film might be out afterwards. He could appear beforehand, I suppose. No reason why he couldn't. Yeah. Um, any, anybody else you guys can think of? Because I've... Strange Supreme? No. No, I've got a couple of others that I could maybe... I have no clue because I am I'm not I'm not up to clued up to the films and series as much as you guys are, so I generally well, don't know. Um you could have uh let me just move over to it so I've got the logo up. Uh you could have, I suppose, the white vision, depending on what he is. Baron Zemo, I think, is a lock. Yelena, it just depends on what Yelena's doing at the time, I think. I don't think she's a bad guy I, though. I think they're trying to make her more the new Black Widow than they are like a bad guy. I think Taskmaster's in it. I could see Ghost from Ant Man and the Wasp being in it, as other people would have mentioned. Uh, I guarantee the reason why Abomination is in She Hulk is because he's going to be in the Thunderbolts. And that's the reason why they uh, hired Thingy. I think he's going to be the replacement for Red Hulk, because obviously we can't have a Red Hulk anymore because it is supposed to be uh, Thunderbolt Ross. And unless they recast him, He's, he'll be no longer with us so i think that's one option um bow could be one um i'm trying to think of other ones bucky could be an option i suppose um deadpool as you guys were saying us agent is obviously one that i'm that i'm blanking on the evil captain america from back in winter soldier uh that was still a dark fucking moment where it bludgeoning that guy yeah, with the shield. Uh, what, what was the character's name? I've forgotten what he is now, US agent. What? Is it something Walker? Yeah, yeah. yeah. John, John Walker? Walker? John no. Walker. He's John Walker. Yeah, it... so um, I think he's a lock. But any anybody else is, is kind of a, a, a toss-up, I suppose. If you bring in somebody like um, a Deadpool or... A ghost rider. See, I would I would have said something like Scarlet Witch, because obviously she was a bit of an anti hero. She's yeah. dead. Because they killed her so, off. Stupid. I, I don't know. Maybe David Harbour's Red Guardian could be in it. I'd like to see David Harbour back. Uh, uh, who was, what was the name of the Black villain Bolt. in Spider Man who Vulture. had the. And like the jet vulture, yeah. Is that well, his name? the reason we don't talk about that is because of Morbius, because there's something going on with that. And the Spider Man villains they're uh, trying to keep exclusively for Spider Man movies, I think. Oh, okay. I didn't, otherwise, Venom might, might have been a great one to add in, or Morbius, or whatever. Yeah. Would have been I mean, they have shown that he is in the MCU. So, uh, Venom, and, could you imagine Venom and Deadpool? Oh my god, yeah. The other one, I could actually I'm picture in the comic, there is one where uh, Deadpool gets taken over by the symbiote. Yeah, the only other one I can think of is um, maybe Agatha goes in it. This mm. is one, um, and I, there was another one that I was just trying to think of. Um, oh, uh, Punisher, if they bring Punisher across. Sam Rockwell's Justin Hammer because we haven't seen him in a little Ghost while. Rider. Yeah, it, it all depends on the team, really. It just depends on. Bring Nick Cage back. Depends on who they do. I think they'll recast. I don't think they'll bring Nick Cage back. But yeah, I'll just quickly read what this is and then we'll kind of move on and uh, just round up phase five and then we're going to take a short break. So, 
A group of villains go on missions for the government. By June 2022, a Thunderbolts film was in development with Jake, Jake Schreier, attached direct, who's previously directed Paper Towns, which was a great film, with Cara Delevingne. Another one of those, like the, the, the Green Brothers or J John Green, whoever, who wrote Fault in Our Stars, another one of them books. And, and uh, Robot and Frank. Literally, he hasn't directed anything since 2015 or anything big. And he's mainly known for directing music videos. So they could do a Russo Brothers and pull him out of relative obscurity and he could do something good with it. But otherwise, I can't really comment on it because I've not seen Paper Towns and from what I've heard, it's not really a good film. Eric Pearson is writing it, who's uh, written a bunch of MCU stuff before. The Consultant, which was a short film. Funny thing that happened on the way to Thor's Hammer, Iron 47. Agent Carter, the short, not the series. Ant-Man, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Pacific Rim Uprising, Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, Pikachu, Detective Pikachu, Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, Black Widow and Thunderbolt. So most of the screenplays he's actually written himself. I've got to the versus Kong, Black Widow, Thor Ragnarok and Thunderbolts. The rest of them are all uncredited rewrites. So he's done some good stuff. And he's made some touches to some yeah. good to some good films. Uh, filming is expected to begin in mid-2023. Actors who had portrayed villain type characters in past MCU projects were expected to be part of the film. Thunderbolts is scheduled for a release in July 26th, 2024. Anything else to add to the Thunderbolts before we sum up Phase 5? If it's going to be anything like their version of Suicide Squad, just let it be fucking amazing. Yeah, let it be better than the original Suicide Squad. I feel exactly if it's, if it's as If it's as bad or worse, then Jesus wept. Right. Um, so, yeah, let's just kind of talk about the phase overall. Uh, I'll just refresh your minds of what's coming and when. So you've got Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, February 17th, 2023. Secret Invasion in spring. Guardians of the Galaxy, May 5th. Echo, summer 2023. Uh, Loki, season two, summer 2023. Uh, the Marvels, uh, July 28th, 2023. Blade, November 3rd, 2023. Ironheart, fall 2023. Agatha, Coven of Chaos, winter, slash, uh, winter 2023, slash spring 2024. Oh, I suppose people still count January as winter, but anyway. Uh, Daredevil Born Again, uh, uh, Spring 2024. And then finally, Captain America New World Order, May 3rd, 2024. And Thunderbolts, July 26th. So, um, does that look like a good phase to you boys? Yeah. Yeah. What? I mean, to be fair, the, the only one I can I can say with certainty that I'm going to see because it's also near my birthday is Blade. Right. A anything else that you 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 definitely going to see or things that you're most interested in? Obviously, you've just said Blade. Anything else from there, like Ant Man, Guardians, Daredevil, Blade? Probably, probably the top three is actually no top four: Guardians, Echo, Blade, and Daredevil. They're my they're my choices. Cool. Nate. I'm looking forward to all of them. Cool. Any any in particular that stand out to you that you really? Expect? I mean, I've been waiting for Ant Man and the Wasp for ages. I've been waiting for Guardians for ages. Ever since I saw uh, Hawkeye, I've been waiting for Echo. I'm looking forward to Miss uh, the Marvels because obviously Miss Marvel was amazing. Loki, I've been waiting for. Um, Daredevil, I've been waiting for them to finally bring him into the MCU properly. So I mean, probably all of them. And Ironheart seems interesting. Agatha. On the edge about Blade, obviously, I've not seen the originals, but that's one thing I'm gonna to have to keep an eye out. Captain, Captain America, hopefully, they, they do the name of Captain America proud, and Thunderbolt seems like it's gonna be interesting. So, yeah, I'm the same. My, my probably biggest ones are the ones that um, we kind of know quite a bit about. So, like Ant Man, you got Ant Man seeing Kang, and if we get Modoc, Guardians, just because like it is the last one, it's probably going to be a lot more emotional, and we're going to probably lose people. Not all of them, but maybe a few. Some of our like more fan favorite Guardians, like a Rocket or whatever. Maybe even a Drax, because Batista has said he's pretty much done with the MCU at this point, because he's getting too fucking old apparently. Um, Marvels, I'm okay with. I'm just ha I'm more excited about anybody bar Captain Marvel. Not because I hate it. I just think the other two are more interesting. Blade. Come on, 
uh, I'm so excited for that. Thunderbolts, not until we start getting a more of a view of the team, and maybe the team pops up beforehand before they become the full team. Captain America, as we say, a bit of better writing. Series, Daredevil. And probably uh, Secret Invasion and Loki for me, because Echo I wasn't obviously in Daredevil I'll be happy with, but like the actual Echo character I wasn't that intrigued with. Agatha, I, I could take or leave for me. Ironheart, I've got to wait until I see her in an actual in Black Panther and Loki season two. I'm, I'm in love with. I can't wait. So yeah, that's everything for phase five of the MCU. I need to go and take a break and talk to these boys about some bits. Um before uh, and and i need to refill my drink and some bits so um do that and then when we get back we're just going to talk a little bit probably about phase six some animation projects and then dungeons and dragons if we get to it uh so be right back if this works
So welcome back everybody, uh, it's just me and Mike now, uh, Nate was getting a little bit knackered, we kind of overrun quite a bit because of the problems at the beginning and then Nate had a uh, power cut so we had to kind of stall for time and a bunch of other things, first time we've streamed we are going to go over a little bit, we're going to try and smack timings down a little bit more and the more we get used to it and it Mike, it's just yeah. just getting used to like doing stuff live and thinking about what you're saying without like cocking your words up or whatever. So, yeah, now we're just going to move on to phase six to finish off. Um, not much announced for phase six. Uh, pretty much only three things, as you can see here. Um, Fantastic Four uh, coming November 6th, 2024. And then the Pièce de la Résistance. Two Avengers movies in 2025. Firstly, Avengers of the Kang Dynasty. We've been talking a lot about Kang. And Loki and obviously an Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania and a bunch of other stuff. He's getting his own movie where he's going to be the big bad like the Thanos. And then over here we've got a movie called Avengers Secret Wars. If you don't know what Secret Wars is, um, it's basically there's two versions of it. There's one where literally just it was a big Avengers team up to fight Kang. Well, I think it was Kang or was it Doom? And then the second one that I'm a little bit more familiar with, because I watched it in the Spider-Man animated series back in the day, is Battleworld, where they bring all the characters from Fantastic Four, like all the characters in the MCU, and they also bring different multiversal versions of them and bring them to one world to fight it out for the continued um, life of their universe, if that makes sense. So it basically gives Marvel the opportunity to bring as many, many, many cameos as they want. They can bring back the other Spider-Men. They can bring back the original X-Men. They can bring back Wesley Snipes if they want. They can bring back Ben Affleck as Daredevil. They can bring back anybody. Or we could see different versions of the characters we already know played by different actors or played by the same actor but looking different, a bit like Benedict Cumberbatch did in Doctor Strange. So a mixture of bloody everything. I've heard a lot of rumours that obviously this movie over here, Doom, uh, D Doom, no, that's what I was going to say. Isn't it? Fantastic Four <laughs> will hopefully introduce Doom, and rather than just having one big bad in Thanos, we will end up having two in Kang and Doctor Doom, which are both pretty much Fantastic Four villains. They're Avengers villains as well, but like Doctor Doom is most associated with Fantastic Four, and um, Kang, aka Nathaniel Richards, is a huge is a my, many years into the future. Um, descendant of Reed Richards and Sue Storm. So there's that there. So that's basically the timeline. Basically with Phase 6, all we're going to do is just kind of talk a little bit about Fantastic Four, a little bit about Avengers Kang Dynasty, and a little bit about Secret Wars, and then kind of just try to fill in the gaps here. So um, we'll go from there, and then uh, we're going to move on to a little bit of Marvel animation, and then we're just going to End, end the stream basically and talk about some of the other STCC stuff, the San Diego Comic Con stuff on a different day. So, without further ado, let's start with the very first thing all the way over here. Let's talk a little bit about Fantastic Four. So, Mike, what's, what's your experience been like with Fantastic Four? Are you a big fan of the, uh, my... the far past few films? Are you, are you not? How much do you know about them? <laughs> The only, the only ones I've the only ones I've seen are the first two. Yeah. Um, the second one didn't go down so well, if I remember it's correctly. A lot of people didn't yeah. like that one. Yeah. Um, first, the very first one I enjoyed. Um, also saw Fantastic Four animation when it was around. Um, and I really enjoyed that the storyline of the animation more than I did the um. More than I did the movies, but the movies were pretty good. It's like their own little things. Yeah, they're, they're pretty early two thousands movies. They're what you got with the rest of them, like Dead yeah. and Hulk. Yeah, carry on, sorry. I mean, the latest Fantastic Four film, if I remember correctly, that didn't go over the so well either. One, yeah, no, everybody hated that. So, uh, so I don't know. I mean, I mean, the movies haven't gone down well, but the animation used to be great. So it's like I'm kind of. I'm I'm kind of mixed. And Fantastic Four, along with X Men, are some of the most popular. Excuse me, uh, characters MCU at the MCU, the MCU Marvel Comics have. Um, yeah. Then the Fantastic Four are known as Marvel's first family for a reason because they are like the big family dynamic team where 
and that's why I probably always enjoyed it. I loved the first two films. I obviously watched the Fantastic Four cartoon. I probably the same one you're talking about in the 90s, the one where they all kind of X-Men and Spider-Man and everything all teamed up eventually. And I, I got introduced to Captain America and Iron Man back then, even when they were kind of like nobody knew about them, essentially. So I've always enjoyed Fantastic Four. I enjoyed the animated series uh, for what it was back in the day, from what I can remember of it. And I do like the first film, and I don't mind the second film. The 2015 one is a bit of a travesty. The first two aren't that bad. They're just not good movies. Uh, they're not um, what we would call like modern blockbusters. They're very old-fashioned. The jokes are very like early 2000s, the clothes, stuff like that. They got the heart of the story right, but the actual plots of stuff, and especially like with Fantastic Four's Rise of the Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer wasn't too bad, but what they did to Galactus was they just made him a big cloud rather than an actual entity. Like he's supposed to be yeah. like a celestial from Eternals. Um, they kind of just did a cloud thing. Um, I, Me personally, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, as I say, I'm a big fan of the characters. I, I'm not a big comic person. I don't collect a bunch of comics, but I do know of these characters. And I hope they're done right. I hope they're casted really well. Um, obviously, on, on the note of casting, I probably should bring this guy up. Uh, John Krasinski. Um, I, I don't want to spoil too much about Doctor Strange, but he made an appearance as Reed Richards in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Um, and there's been a lot of speculation that he signed a deal with Marvel then to appear as a cameo and then to actually become... Reed Richards. I know a lot of fan casting that have him and Emily Blunt as uh, Reed Richards and Sue Storm because they're really a couple. They're really good actors and they're good at what they do. I, I, I don't mind that casting. I do like John Krasinski. I, I don't know whether he would be perfect for the role because we didn't really get to see much of him in Multiverse of Madness is what I'm going to say. Um, So I can't really comment on that casting, but it sounds good. I, I do think, uh, in regards to the thing, Michael Chiklis, who played him in the original ones, was pretty damn near accurate. So if you're going to get somebody mm. to play the thing, slash Ben Grimm, then I think there's your template. Johnny Storm, I, I did like Chris Evans as Johnny Storm. That's one of the first things I think I ever saw Chris Evans in, way before he did Captain America. I didn't hate him. I, I just don't think... I think he brought too much of the hot-headedness, which is what Johnny is. But, like, I don't know. I never really felt him as Johnny Storm. Mm. Yeah. As a human torch. But I, 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 I just genuinely can't wait to get these characters back on the big screen. Marvel tends to do these type of characters really well. So um, they, tend to, they tend to, like, take things that have been previously established as not good or aren't in the popular canon sorry i've my cats decided to come and join in um but um yeah i i just i can't wait to see these this movie uh i just want to add to this uh quickly um with something that i've got from wikipedia again um and it's just small because there isn't that much announced about it at the moment. At the July 2019 San Diego Comic Con, Kevin Feige announced uh, Marvel Studios was developing a Fantastic Four film for the MCU. With John Watts, who directed the previous three Spider-Man movies, Homecoming, Far From Home and No Way Home as well, announced as the director in December 2020, Watts stepped down in April 2020 to take a break from superhero projects, mainly because he's now doing the Star Wars series, I believe it is, Skeleton Crew with Jude Law, one of the biggest budget Star Wars has ever given for a Star Wars show. Um, filming is expected to begin in 2023. Fantastic Four is scheduled for a release in November 8, 2024. Should be the first property. There, uh, If we go back to this, there does seem to be something just before it, a full 2024 thing, whether that's a film or whether that's a series. We don't know yet. Um, uh, wrong, wrong image. Put it back to that one. But um, Krasinski fits because he's directed A Quiet Place with him and his wife before. I think he did the second one as well. So it works. But I, I'm just waiting to see what Marvel brings out. I think a lot of this Phase 6 stuff is what they're going to do on D23. Because D23 is like their version of Comic-Con. It's just for all Disney properties like Marvel, Star Wars, disney owned stuff, Pixar. Um what else uh every, their original movies the live action remakes series 
um all their stuff like national treasure that's where everything big is going to get announced probably we're probably going to get a lot of trailers out of that and i believe that is september the weekend of september 10th i think um or uh, okay. or is september the 10th for uh, a weekday september the 10th is a saturday so i could see thor dropping on either the night because i think uh d23 and disney plus day are usually in the same weekend disney plus day is where like they celebrate the release of Disney Plus mainly over in the States. And they have a bunch of stuff. They had one last year, and that's when we got Jungle Cruise and maybe even Black Widow because they were doing the premiere access thing where you paid for those movies and then you got them for as long as you want. But for everybody else that didn't pay, they just got dropped for free. So um, they drop a lot of like series and bits and bobs. And this year is probably going to be even bigger. And D23, I think, is a whole weekend. So I could see us getting like. If we're going to get an X-Men movie, all the casting and all that stuff coming then. All this stuff for Fantastic Four. We'll know where our directors are. We'll probably know who our Fantastic Four are. Um, and I bet that all gets announced at D23, as a lot of other people are saying. So, yeah. Anything else to add before we move on to the next property? Um, I'm hoping it's just not as bad as the last one. Oh, that's the wrong one. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I really do. It's like that's that's all I'm hoping. I mean, I'll watch it and make my own decision, like I do with every film. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just hoping it's not as bad as the last one. Cool. Um, next up, um, on that Phase Six timeline is Avengers: Kang Dynasty. I don't know whether these are going to be two individual Avengers movies or if they're going to be one through line. I know a lot of people are expecting them to be part one and part two, like Infinity War and Endgame so uh i'm looking forward to it um don't know much about it obviously it's another avengers team up movie we'll probably get some of the guys that we didn't expect to come back like tony and steve and, and everything and it's an opportunity for our new avengers to shine even though we don't know who our new avengers are yet um that would be a cool thing to talk about um after d23 and if they haven't announced it kind of go who are our new avengers team um i i seem to think that the the core four are going to be Captain America, uh, Sam Wilson, Sam Wilson's Captain America, um, Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel, um, and whoever the new Black Panther is, whether they're Avengers or not, because I don't really class Doctor Strange as an Avenger, but in these team ups, he essentially is, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Um, but the Kang Dynasty um, is uh, actually going to be it's got its director it's the only phase six movie to get its director and it's actually being directed by uh one uh let me just move this over destin daniel cretton who um did or credit uh, I, I don't know how you say his name i think it is cretton because cretton makes him sound like it's cretton um <laughs> uh who directed shang chi previously and he's also i know he's got his finger in fingers in a bunch of other pies as well because i know he wants to do shang chi too and i think they were doing a wonder man uh movie or something a uh, series and he's got his hands in that as well so he's a very busy guy he seems to be like the new big guy coming out of all the mcu stuff so um he's their director i think he's got a lot to tie into shang chi obviously kang's going to be huge in it if it does have a tie-in, then this is probably going to be a cliffhanger where the Avengers lose again, and then they have to pick themselves back up to go and fight on Battle World or whatever in Secret Wars. But I, I'm really looking forward to this. We probably you may see Black Suit Spider-Man because I know in in the Secret Wars comic that's where he got his black suit from, the, the symbiote Venom suit. Miles Morales could turn up. There's a lot of stuff that could turn up. Multiverse just gives them the opportunity to go absolutely fucking mental. So. You uh, you got a take on this, Mike? Uh, I've kind of got a take on both of them because I'm kind of just going to do it both as a wanna. Um, okay. I'm looking forward to both of them because I've watched every other Avengers main film, yeah. like where it's been like Avengers Assemble, End Game, stuff like that. So I'm I'm looking forward to these two. I will sit down and watch it, especially Secret War because that's intrigues me a lot more than than any of the others so far. Yeah. Well. That'll be your big team up. I, I just like the fact that my <clears throat> my favourite film of Phase Four and of and of what they're terming the multiverse saga, which I'll talk about in a moment, um, is Shang Chi so far. 
and they got the guy who directed my favourite film in the multiverse saga to direct the first Avengers movie. There was a lot of talk that the Russo brothers, who did uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, Civil War, and both Infinity War and Endgame are coming back, but it doesn't look like they're going to be doing either of the Avengers movies. And this time, unlike Infinity War and Endgame, where they were kind of like two collaborative pieces done by the same director, unless Destin Daniel Cretton takes over the third one, the Secret Wars as well, it looks like there's going to be two separate directors. Oh, that's so interesting. we could have two different styles and tones and stuff. So this is why I kind of lean towards the theory that they're two separate movies rather than like, obviously Infinity War and Endgame are two separate movies. You can watch them separately. They have a beginning, middle and end, but they're meant to be part of a whole, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that's Kang Dynasty. Uh, I just want to read quickly what it says on here. Um, at San Diego Comic Con in July 2022, Marvel Studios announced the Kang Dynasty. Followed shortly after with the confirmation of Destin Daniel Cretton's director, Avengers of the Kang Dynasty is scheduled to release uh, on May 2nd, 2025. So that's the Kang Dynasty. Um, now we move on to, as I say, uh, to the, the, the big movie, the end game of Phase 6 and the Multiverse Saga in general. Um, I'm, of course, talking about Secret Wars. So, as I say, um, I don't know tons about Secret Wars. I know the Battle World version rather than the, the other version, because I've seen it before in other media. Cool concept. The ability to be able to bring cameos in gives us more fan nuts m moments, if that makes sense. So, like, more moments for us to go nuts over you know, nostalgia and stuff. Um, if you're going to go big... After the Infinity Saga, Secret Wars kind of makes sense because um, it's it's a it's it's a bigger thing because there's more people and multiverses and stuff like that involved. So I think that makes sense. And then I, I this is why when we get on to what we think those gaps are, I don't think we're getting X Men until um, Phase Seven, and I think that might be the Mutant Saga. I could be wrong. But I think you've got enough set up there that you don't need to bring in the mutants yet. Obviously, you could bring in some of the characters, but I don't know if you get an X Men movie until Phase Seven. It, yeah, it would make sense to have its like maybe have it have its own phase or something because mutants are so big. You've got to explain like how they came in and <clears throat> and stuff. And then I'm sure uh, there was an Avengers versus X Men run. So you, your team up movie could be good guys versus good guys. That fight over yeah. a misunderstanding, a bit like Civil War, and that could be your big team up movie. Um, so yeah, some good stuff there that um uh, we talk that we could talk about. Um, anything else you want to add on to this? Uh, quick. No, I think I'm good. I think I said everything to be right, fair. I'm just going to uh quickly. Oh, where am I? Uh, bring this up. Um, so let me just move over to that. Um, so th these are your uh, big core six apparently at the moment. Uh, Sam Wilson, Captain America, uh, Captain Marvel, Reed Richards would make sense. I don't know why Kang is in there if this is supposed to be your, your thing. I suppose he's your bad guy. Wolverine, I, I, I can see them doing Wolverine separate and we could maybe get a Wolverine movie, but I don't think we get a huge mutants, X Men, whatever movie. Yet. Obviously, Deadpool as well. We'd like to know how he fits in. He's obviously going to be R-rated. We haven't got an announcement for his film yet. And another Spider-Man movie as well. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm just going to read this quickly, and then we're going to kind of talk about and fill in the blanks when it comes to um, what's, what's in the blank on that timeline. So uh, all this says is at San Diego Comic-Con in July 2022, Marvel Studios announced Avengers Secret Wars and it's scheduled to be released on November 7th, 2025. So my thing is, uh, and, and I want to ask your opinion on this, um, what do you think about there being two Avengers movies in the same year? Oh, sorry, you munching, didn't you? I'll go first while you're finishing. Night. You're up. Yeah, I'll go on. first while you're finishing off your crisps. Um, for me, I, I don't know if we're going to start getting a bit more of an MCU overload and a bit more of an MCU fatigue, especially 
the reason why I think Infinity War and Endgame worked is because there was enough time to... So many people saw Infinity War. There was enough time to build up expectations towards Endgame. And um, it worked because there was that time between the two films. Whereas here, I think it's like closer to like six months. It's what... Um, uh, May to November, so it's not even six months, it's more like five months, and they're both early in the months as well. So, I don't know how I feel about this. I could see this eventually getting pushed off to 2026, early 2026, like January, February, but um, I don't think they'd release it in January, or February. I think it ends up being pushed to like April, uh, next year uh, in 2026, but I don't know, it's something we've got to look into. Now, now that you finish your crisps, what do you think? Um, the only thing I can think of besides what you said about maybe pushing one of them back is um, maybe it's like the first film they go through, they do something, and then they kind of get thrown in the deep end. That's why the second one comes out so soon. It's like they don't have enough time to recover, per se, depending on how long the timeline is in the films. So maybe it's just a case of this big thing happened, you then survived. Now another big thing happens, and another big thing happens straight after, and you just have to deal. I get you. I just think they're... I think maybe not in the multiverse um, saga, but we are going to probably end up with like six to eight MCU series a year, five films in the theatres, if not dropped straight on Disney+. Plus. Um, big films coming out one after another, and not enough time to be able to absorb it. And for the average fan, or for the average cinema goer, to get like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? Something that like even you at times get a little bit confused at, like, oh, what does this mean? And what's this? And what's that? Like my dad, who's watched everything so far, all the movies, all the series, um, on Disney Plus. Maybe he's a little bit behind on Miss Marvel, but he's watched pretty much everything else. Um, and he, he's even, when I did this announcement with him and I told him everything was coming, he's like, whoa, just slow down, that's so much. Yeah. So I, I just think that eventually it's going to get to the point where they're going to kill their kind of viewer base. Obviously the hardcores are always going to be there. People like me and like Nate and you to a certain extent are always going to be there. But the average film goer, which are the people that usually make you money, yeah. um, I don't know, maybe eventually there's like a reboot somewhere down the line and we have to get in new versions of all the characters or something. Cause I, 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 I it's it's hard to it's hard to it's, say. I just think it's too much. But yeah, that's pretty much everything on um the Avengers movies. Just gonna quickly talk about phase six and we're gonna get that timeline up again and kind of fill in some of these blanks and then we're gonna move on to Marvel animation. Just quickly, just breeze through those. And then uh, we're going to end the show. So um, is 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 a timeline. You can probably see it now. Um, well, not yet, but it will come up on the stream in a minute. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spare slots um, in between all, all of these films. Uh, I can probably imagine... Three of them might be movies and the rest might be series. Mm. So um, I'm just going to get my uh, little whiteboard out again. Hopefully this, hopefully this works. Yep. So I think we've still got to fill in. Sorry for my poor handwriting. I am writing on a mouse. Actually, let me write that again. Actually, let me write it down here. So, show. show fucking hell. My handwriting is really terrible. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> show. I have to take my time to write this so it looks legible. Show. 
Shang-Chi 2. Eternals 2. Um, moon. So was it Shang Chi? Etern was it Eternals yeah. 2? Sorry for the poor handwriting, guys. Moon Knight. I oh, yeah, Moon Knight Season 2. That could be a good show. Or even a Moon Knight movie. Season. Two, um, I don't know if they'd put this on the board. Not supposed to say Spider Man before. <laughs> I wish I had an eraser, but I don't have one on this on this software yet. So you got Spider Man four, um. And this one's pretty easy. X Men. Yeah, I forgot about that. Deadpool. We know these are coming. So you've got Shang Chi season, Shang Chi two. It's pretty much been confirmed because of how much money it was made. Eternals to Patton Oswalt, who plays uh, Pip Troll in the uh, post credit scene, recently went on one of the many revolving American chat shows, like uh, Tonight, uh, the Tonight Show, and, or something like that, and basically confirmed that Eternals 2 is happening with um, Chloe Zhao. There's also another okay. thing about Moon Knight Season 2, uh, some somebody made a TikTok. I'd love to be able to find it. That discussed um, Mohammed Diab, who directed the first season, and Oscar Isaac were in Egypt. And this this uh, fan said, um, "Are you in Moon Knight Two? Are you in Egypt to film Moon Knight Two? And or some something along those lines. And then it pans to Oscar Isaac, and he goes, "What do you think we're in Egypt for?" So he's not actually <laughs> said. Moon Knight season two official, but they could have just been scouting it's, for locations. It's pre I think Moon Knight season two happens. I think Miss Marvel continues into the films uh, somehow. Spider Man. I, I the reason I put it down there. I don't think this fits in here, mainly because that's a Sony property. It's up to Sony when they want to put their films out. So I could see Sony wanting to do another Spider Man film. In what 2023 2024 because the last few have all come out every yeah. two years. So, Homecoming is 2017, uh, the one after that, Far From Home, is 2019, uh, No Way Home is 2021, and then I reckon Spider Man 4, whatever they're going to call it. Um, I don't know if they're going to carry the home thing over, but whatever they're going to call it, I reckon either happens in 2023 or 2024. Four. So, I don't know if that's up to them. X Men. We just discussed. I don't know if this fits in. Maybe a Wolverine original movie, but I don't know. Deadpool, uh, what is it? Deadpool three. Um, yeah. I think is in one one of these. And then you, uh, and then oh, the other one that I forgot. Armor Wars. They confirmed a couple of, uh, couple of uh, I think at the same time when he did the Phase 4 slate, that uh, Rhodey, uh, Don Cheadle, was going to get his own series called Armor Wars, where he's going to go and track down okay. uh, a bunch of, uh, just going to try and stop Tony Stark's nightmare. Um, is tech falling into the wrong hands and people getting their own Iron Man suits? Or, or technology, uh, right. and he's going to go and shut it down. So, I think... Considering there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't want to put them in their dates, but I think there's one, two, three, four, five at least there. Mm. Because by the time you get to like winter 2024 and spring 2025, it'll have been three years uh, since three years and 
early 2025, you're talking six months since Eternals. By the end of this point here, Shang-Chi will have been out for almost the same amount. Uh, and usually they tend to get sequels out within three or four years. Guardians, not not removed, because Guardians has been like five years since their last one. Well, it'd be yeah. six. Uh, yeah, it'd be about six years, I think, since the last one. But most of them, they try and get them out within three or four years. Deadpool, I think, is a fucking nailed on for one of those slots. Genuinely. Whether that's in that, it may not be one of those slots, but I definitely think it's coming. Whether it's in one yeah. of those slots or not. Armor Wars, I think, is definitely one of those. And I think Moon Knight Season 2 is one of those. Everything else, I couldn't tell you. There could be an X-Men movie. And then that would make you a three, three or four movie quota. If you leave Deadpool off and it's its own thing. Then I think there's mm. your three movies. X-Men, Eternals and Shang-Chi. Because I don't think we get another Black Widow movie. Um, not Not lately anyway and i don't think we get um another thor or doctor strange or black panther even in this time frame i think those yeah. characters still appear as as is always the same in the mcu but i don't think we get another one of their movies not yet anyway um especially with the amount of stuff they've already announced so i reckon um that's most of it plugged in shang chi 2 eternals 2 x-men maybe that's i'm under like 50 percent on that maybe even under 30 percent on that and deadpool 3 i think are three of them there may be another one that comes up and surprises us but i think that's three of those slots um and then i think armor wars is one moon knight season two is one because i know they said they kind of wanted to keep it as a tv show um maybe a scarlet witch um another season of uh, well, not one division because they said not one division, but maybe like her own series by herself or her own movie. I'd be happy with. But otherwise, yeah. I can't really think of anything else that fits in that gap. What about you? No, nah, mate, nothing. I didn't even get any of those when you were putting them down until after you started writing them. So nothing was coming to my so mind. So that that's mainly it for me. I can't think of anything else that fills in that gap because we know pretty much Shang Chi and Eternals are coming because Shang Chi did really well. Eternals has pretty much been confirmed. Moon Knight Season 2 isn't been confirmed, but I think out of all the Disney Plus series they've done, unless they do a Loki Season 3, I think Moon Knight Season 2 makes the most sense. And obviously we're not yeah. talking about the animated stuff in this. This is all live action. We'll get on to the animated stuff in a minute. But that pretty much covers all of Phase 4, 5 and 6. Um, we're just going to quickly touch on the animation stuff and then we're going to get going because I know uh, Mike especially uh, has to get out for work in the morning and it's like one o'clock now and um, yeah. I need to get to bed because I've got some stuff to do tomorrow. So we're just going to quickly skim through um, the Marvel animation stuff. So um, uh, we'll, we'll just quickly say what they are and then we'll go through them one by one. So. Firstly, you've got I Am Groot, which is actually dropping on Wednesday. Um, uh, five original shorts about Groot throughout the time he's been with the Guardians. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention is uh, they're doing a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special at Christmas, just before, I think it's set after four, Love and Thunder, but before Guardians 3. And it's also supposed to be a Werewolf by Night Halloween special, but we've heard nothing about that. Like a thirty-minute short ah. about uh, the guy who play the guy who um, becomes werewolf by night. I can't remember the character's name. There might be other like horror thing characters, but it'll be our introduction to werewolf by night. Um, Jack Russell, I believe his name is. It makes sense because he's a dog. He's werewolf. <laughs> but um, yeah. So oh, I just realised I'm on the wrong screen again. No, it's not here. So, uh, those I forgot to mention, but I've got I Am Groot. Uh, what If Season 2 and Season 3 has been confirmed as well. X-Men 97, a reboot of the series from way back way, way, way back when. Spider-Man Freshman Year and a confirmation that they're going to do Season 2 of Sophomore Year. It's called Sophomore Year, which makes sense. And then, um, finally, uh, Marvel Zombies, which is a spin-off of the uh, Zombies episode. I think it's episode five or six 
of season one of what if where it's just about like um uh i can't remember how they got how they got zombies but um after the avengers turn into zombies some of them are left some of them aren't so um that's your lineup so let's just quickly talk about i am group um i'm just gonna get some images up um sounds good look looks good to me um let's just zoom in a little bit i go over here sorry for my cat so yeah uh, it looks good um there's not really much for me to to say with this it's coming out there's five individual shorts i can tell you what the names of the shorts are and what they can kind of what they're kind of about but um otherwise I can't really say that much. Uh, where are we? Halloween special. Just trying to find um, the group thing. Wherever it's bloody gone. Uh, it's kind of disappeared. I have to search it up. I am group. Yeah, here we go. Uh, episodes. Five indiv individual shorts. Uh, no, uh, yeah, five. Yeah, there's one called Groot's First Steps, the Little Guy, Groot's Pursuit, Groot Takes a Bath. Uh, taking a Bath allows Baby Groot to create a variety of costumes out of his leaves, angry a nearby animal. Uh, and then number five is Magnum Opus. Inside the Eclectors, the, yeah, the Eclectors Quadrant, Groot gathers various items to draw the Guardians of the Galaxy. Later, cause an explosion inside one of the ship's rooms. Rocket finds Groot trying to fix a blown up hole. And receives the drawing. Another explosion causes Rocket to be almost sucked out of the ship. Only to be saved by Groot. I think that is the episode they showed at Comic Con. Because they've showed quite a bit. And it's basically just Rocket's going to have an appear in it. James Gunn's going to have a quick appearance in it. And um, Vin Diesel's back to play Groot. And then there's like quick little three minute shorts. Nothing special. But it's just some, just like all over the shop. So some of them that are in between... Guardians of the Galaxy, some of them are Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, mid credit scenes just before he becomes Teenage Group, basically. Okay. And cool. it's got James Gunn in it. So James Gunn's coming back to do it. Recently done Suicide Squad and Pete. <coughs> Pardon me. Peacemaker, the show with uh, John Cena, his character from that movie. Yeah. He's going to do the uh, holiday special and then obviously Guardians Volume 3. So uh, that's I am group. Not really much special to talk about there. Let's move on to something I can talk a little bit more about. X Men ninety seven. So I remember watching this series as a kid. I, I don't know much about the creators or anything. Uh, unlike the uh, the DCAU, the one with Batman, the animated series, Superman, and all that. But overall, it's looking good. They've got the characters right. Um, looking right look just like they did in the series i think a lot of the cast actors are uh the same casts are coming back so uh it's looking really good just trying to find a uh thing for it i can't really find it uh, where are we there's somewhere uh, continuations okay maybe not where is it X-Men 97. So, basically, Wikipedia says, uh, Revival. By 2019, there were talks with Disney Plus to revive the series. In November 2021, Revival, titled X-Men 97, was premiered. It was revealed to premiere on the service in 2023, which will continue the plot of the series. Bo DeMeo will serve as head writer with most of the surviving cast members. The original series reprising their roles, including Dodd, Zan, Buzzer, Disher, Potter, Silly Smith, and Hal. And Britain, they will be joined by Jennifer Hale and Iwa Bwaki. I think is how you say their, their name. Sorry if I butchered it. Ray Chase, Matthew Waterson, uh, JP Carliac, Holly Shue, Jeff Bennett, and AJ Lucasio. Court will not be reprising her role as Jubilee, but will instead voice another character as she asks for Jubilee to be voiced by an Asian actress. So it's been produced by Marvel Studios. It's basically the same people that voiced them. Um, uh, I was trying to remember who did what where the voice cast was but um yeah scott summers done by norm spencer the cyclops done by norm spencer uh wolverine done by cal dodd 
uh, Rogue done by the Nor Zan, uh, a Storm done by somebody new, I believe, because both her, both her voice actors have died. George Boozer is coming back as Beast. Uh, we've got somebody new to voice Gambit. Alison Court as Jubilee. Catherine Disher as Jean Grey slash Phoenix. Cedric Smith as Professor X. And David Hemblum as Magneto, amongst all the other ones that I said earlier. I'm just going to have a quick look at some of the stills that I've got for it. Uh, before we move on, so this is the revival essentially, they're your original characters. So Cyclops, Jubilee, Wolverine, Gambit, Rogue, Storm, Jean, and Beast. Um, so here's the cast a little bit more power. There's some other characters, some of the newer characters, so like Nightcrawler. I think that's supposed to be um, Cable. Maybe that's, um, whatchamacallit, from uh, Caliban. I don't know everything. And maybe Darkstar and all that. So there's a, couple, there's a couple of characters there that are new. Also alongside the villains. Uh, some newer villains. Uh, Nathaniel Essex. Um, and then he, he, Emma Frost. And I can't remember his bloody name, but he was uh, the bad guy in um, uh, X-Men... First class. I can't remember what it was. Played by Kevin Bacon. Sebastian Shaw. So, so there's your villains, basically. Really looking forward to it. I, I, I don't know when. I need to rewatch the original series, which is on Disney Plus now. But that's it for X Men 97. Um, on top of that, we're also getting um, a series called Spider Man Freshman Year. Um, we don't know whether this is canon to our Spider-Man, as in like Tom Holland's Spider-Man or not, because a lot of the stuff that they introduce um, just didn't happen uh, for our one. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can find an article on it so I can read, read you a bit of background behind it. And as I say, there will be a sequel, sequel um, to it called Sophomore Year as well. So oh, fair enough. pretty good. Um, Where are we? I'm trying to find it. Spider Man freshman year. So basically, uh, in an alternate reality, so that pretty much solves that, Peter Parker's origin story in early days using the Spider Man persona explored. In November 2021, the animated series Spider Man freshman year was announced with Jeff Trammell serving as head writer and executive producer. The series features a style that celebrates and pays homage. To the early Spider-Man comics, a second season titled Spider-Man Sophomore Year is in development. Charlie Cox is back to voice um, Matt Murdock uh, slash Daredevil from all the other MCU stuff in the original, as we talked about earlier. The series features Norman Osborn and Otto Octavius following the appearance of other versions of the characters in Spider-Man No Way Home. Alongside Nico Minoru, who's mainly uh, appeared in The Runaways, and she's mainly known as a runaway, but she's also another different type of magician with her staff. So there's that. Looks pretty good. Um, I'll just get up some of the some of the concept art so you can have a look. I'll just leave it on for a couple of seconds. So um, this is Daredevil. Looks really good. I'll just wait for it to change over on the what do you call it? Uh, when it changes over on the stream, so I can leave it up for a little while. <laughs> um, zoom in a little bit, but that's that's his look. He's got a full black suit and red, mainly so Mike can see it more than anything. There you go. Yeah. So um, there's there's the Daredevil uh, stuff. His uh, Daredevil and Doctor Strange is also appearing. I'm not sure whether it's Benedict or not, but uh, there you go. Uh, Doctor Strange will also appear alongside it um so just quickly leave that up for five more seconds that yeah, looks pretty cool though i'll just wait for it to change over and zoom in a little bit so you can see it there you go there's dog strange and the same daredevil then you've got norman osborn um is a he's a uh by the looks of it, a black Norman Osborn, which is different to what we've normally got because he's always a white guy. And I like that they brought back the original hair with the diagonals and stuff in it. You'll see it in a minute. 
Um, but it looks. Yeah, it looks. It looks like they're doing this as like the old, like nineties two thousand cartoon esque. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I just want to double check something while I wait for that to come up. You know, look, under that spider man. Just want to see if Bailey come about. Just coming back to voice it. Or not. I was just kind of interested. Yeah, there's no words yet, but once we know a little bit more, I'll um, date you guys in the future. Then we've got the man himself, Mr. Spider Man. Good look. Kind of inspired by Tom Holland, to be fair. Just with glasses. Wait for that switch over so you can see it. And then we've got two more graphics. And then we'll move on to What If. And Marvel Zombies. There you go. So there's your Spider Man. Are you seeing that, Mike? Yeah, I'm seeing it. Then we've got Peter's friends. So this could be Nico in the middle with the blue hair. There's Peter. I suppose some of these are Kurt Connors. Some of them maybe MJ. I I don't know. I don't know that many. So we'll have to kind of find out as it goes on. So there's that one. I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see it. I can see what you mean by Tom Holland esque yeah. a yeah, little yeah. bit. And then finally, the villains. So some of these we should be able to kind of get. Uh, this could be Rhino over here with the orange hair. In the middle is obviously uh, Doc Ock, Scorpion over here. I think I know who the flame one is, but I can't remember off the top of my head. This one could be Tombstone on the far right with the white head. Uh, but I still don't know who the one in the purple vest with the red hair is. Off the top of my head. The one on the left with the blonde spiky hair and the helmet. I don't know. The lady here in the camo trousers. No clue. And then the one next to who I believe is probably Rhino with the ginger hair with the leg guards this is something i'm probably going to have to kind of figure out maybe there's some lower level villains specifically made for this show i don't know yeah possibly but um yeah so that's uh spider-man freshman year and obviously second year for sophomore year as well which will be coming soon and that's going to have two seasons and then we're going to move on to something uh a little bit smaller in scale i suppose oh no let's do what if first. so first off what if season two um as you can see on the screen in front yeah it's gonna have a lot more episodes from like black widow eternals are confirmed to be in it um we're gonna get stuff from shang chi as well i'll show you some images um a minute expect shang chi is definitely confirmed for marvel zombies so that's gonna sound that's gonna be we interesting that so i'm just uh double checking who where what it is so i can do season two just trying to see if they did something specifically on season two but it doesn't look like they've added anything else have a quick scan through just see if we can see anything yeah so phase four characters won't appear until the second season by the looks of it jeffrey wright's coming back as the watcher and a lot of the characters that you know uh, will be voiced by people the actual people who they are so um yeah something to look forward to i don't know too much about it all we know is that like season two's 
season two, the first episode is what if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper? Peggy Carter, Captain Car- Peggy Carter slash Captain Carter believes that the love of her life, Steve Rogers, is long dead, as you find out in the first episode of What If, is long dead until he is discovered alive as the villainous Hydra Stomper. So basically, it's a twist on Peggy is Steve, and Steve is now Bucky, essentially. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't know that much about season two. They haven't really announced too much about season two, so I'm just waiting for um, that to kind of be confirmed, essentially. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just trying to see if they had, had any extra. It's all written and directed by the same guys, Brian Andrews directing and AC Bradley writing. <laughs> Pardon me, and season two is coming out next year. And also, this is another thing I wanted to talk about. Season three has been confirmed. So, looking good on the animation front as well. I didn't mind what if. It wasn't the best. And I don't think they should be promoting it as a mainline MCU series, even though it's kind of good for the, for the multiverse side of it. I just think it's kind of like, if they do what they did in season one, it's just smaller scale stories. And maybe it should be put on at the same time as a story, uh, Star Wars series or some such. So, yeah, I, well, to be fair, I haven't actually watched any of what if I might have to give it. Well, they're individual episodes, so they don't carry on really until the final final two or so. So you can get away with it. And also, as I say, um, Shang Chi and Eternals are going to be in what if season. So that's pretty much it. I just got one more thing to talk about. And probably the thing, apart from maybe Spider-Man, that I'm the most excited about, Marvel Zombies. Now, I can't remember exactly what happened in to make them zombies, because I haven't watched that episode since it came out. Literally the day it was released. So I'm just going to have a, a double check at how it actually happened. Oh, that's how it happened. So, um, at the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp, Hank goes to find Janet Van Dyne in the quantum realm. And it turns out that she's infected with quantum virus. So she infects everybody. And then it's just a massive oh. like, zombie outbreak and stuff. Some of them are alive, some of them aren't. Blah, blah, blah. Probably one of the better op- episodes. The best episode in season four, in my opinion, is the Doctor Strange one about what if he lost his heart instead of his hands. Some other ones that I did enjoy, like the final two, What If Ultron won, and What If the Bro- Watcher Broke His Oath. But it's fun, fun 30 minute episodes that I enjoyed. So that's that yeah, when it comes enough. to What If. But Marvel Zombies, that's how the quantum virus infects them. Um, some of the cast are coming back from first from that episode. We've got some new ones added in as well. I just wanted to um, show you a little bit about who's going to be in the cast and stuff. So if you look at that cast there, you've got Yelena on the left. Um, you've got Kate, Kate Bishop. You've got Jimmy. Uh, I can't remember what his name is now. Jimmy from WandaVision and thing he played by Randall Park. Jimmy Wu, I think his name is. With the card trick. Okay. You've got Shang-Chi in the middle. I believe that. That looks like Miss Marvel. So I think that's Kamala. Um, right in the middle with the, the scarf on next to Shang-Chi. Then you've got the Death Dealer from the Shang-Chi movie. You've got uh, David Harbour's Red Guardian, who was like Black Widow's Guardian in that show. And then you've got Aquafina as well. So these are all being added to the cast on top of the ones, the one that was already in the show, I believe. Uh, oh, so okay. that's that. Then they've also announced that um, we are getting scrolls. So it's going to be a scroll like biker gang, like Mad Max biker gang, roaming the plains of America and the world, fighting off against uh, zombies, which sounds pretty cool to me. Um, and the design looks pretty sick. You'll probably like this one once it comes up on the screen. See that? Uh, not yet. It's up on the stream now. It should just be going through. There it is. It's come up now. So that looks pretty good. Cool design. 
That looks like something out of Resident Evil 3, I think it is. So there's that. With the, with the roaming through the deserts of the US. Like, it's not necessarily a bike gang, but it's a convoy. And then next up, we've got some widows from Black Widow. So some of the widows that survived from the end of Black Widow, they're helping the team to kind of fight off some of the zombies. So you'll see that in a second. And then I've just got two, maybe three more little bits, and then we'll just have a round up of the animation panel. And then we're done. So there's the widows. As you can see them. Um, so that's that. And then we've got the villains. So from what I can make out here, there's Steve in the bottom right. Uh, top right is Captain Marvel. The, that's abomination, I think, the big green green thing. And they got Hawkeye over here. And I think the person next to him is Ghost from Ant Man and the Wasp. And then uh, top left, you've got Wanda, obviously. And then there's some other bits and bobs here as well. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the zombies because there's some actually cool stuff that they talked about. Um, And Ghost is Ava Star. So you see that now. So you've got the villains there. They all look pretty good. Yeah, and then I think the last one, another person they confirmed, is that Icarus from Eternals is also a zombie. And and because huh. like they, they say in the Eternals movie that they're actually like robots underneath, they're metal underneath. You can kind of see like his skin peeling away and it's just like a metal robot underneath. So almost like yeah. a terminator. So that's pretty much it for all the images. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um about what's happening with Marvel zombies. And then um and we'll kind of give an evaluation of the vision panel. So I'm just closing all my tabs because I'm probably going to crash my computer if I don't. So, where are we? Marvel Zombies. So, in November 2021, Marvel Zombies animated series was announced. With Andrews, um, Brian Andrews, who directed it, uh, returning to direct, and Zeb Wells serving as head writer, focusing on a new generation of heroes battling zombies, so some of our Phase 4 guys. And it is a continuation of the reality first introduced in the fifth episode of the series that looks like that looks at the universe with a different lens. And I think we'll probably get a little bit more if I just zoom down here. Yeah, so that's it really um, for animated. Overall, I think I'm the most excited for maybe Marvel Zombies. Because it just sounds like something totally different. And, and that was one of the better episodes of What If. Then probably uh, What If Season 2. Because I did enjoy it. And I would like some new What If stories. Like It's just a cool... I, 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 don't, I didn't like it where they plugged it as like a mainline MCU series that you have to watch. Because it isn't really. It's not like Loki or whatever. It doesn't yeah. tie into the grander story. It's just... What if this one thing was changed? How would the world go... And what would that multiverse look like? Kind of. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. I just wish it'd be on with something else like uh, Star Wars or whatever. Um, then probably Spider-Man Freshman Year because it's cool to get another Spider-Man origin. Be a bit different. X-Men 97 next after that. Mainly because um, I enjoyed the original, but I can't remember watching any of it. And I'd have to go back and watch the original animated series to kind of get the most out of this. And the last I am group, not because I'm not excited for it, it's just that there's they're short. So you can watch more within fifteen minutes. Is all. So that's it. Any your take on any of the uh animation panel? Uh Marvel Zombies just sounds rather entertaining. Um X Men ninety seven, it'd be nice to it'd be nice to watch it again and then watch the new stuff that they got coming. Yeah. Um, there's, those are really the two of the main that I would actually be looking forward to. The rest I would... You'll get to eventually. Yeah, I'll get to eventually. Groot will probably end up on bloody YouTube at some point anyway, so I won't worry that much. Because uh, they're only 15 yeah, minutes. If it's, only, 
Yeah. Spider Man, I get it. I, I I'm kind of tired of Spider Man origin stories, but I suppose if they're gonna do it a little bit differently, I'm happy with that. So yeah, that's pretty much everything on the animation panel. Um I'm just gonna quickly go over to here with uh myself and Mike and kind of talk a little bit about um what's what's coming soon. So uh as I say Probably going to do another video just touching on the rest of the Comic-Con stuff because we had some problems, the power cut, and now it's some other stuff we had to stall for and some problems here. Probably added an extra half an hour, 45 minutes onto what probably could have been a three, two and a half, three hour show, <laughs> essentially. Um, but we've covered all the Marvel stuff. We've gone in depth as we needed to. I knew this was going to take up most of it. I thought we'd be around it in an hour, but we had quite a lot to talk about. So the rest of the SDCC stuff we'll cover at some point this week in its own separate stream. Hopefully. hopefully. I've also, I'm also going to be live streaming some reviews because at the end of the year I want to do a uh, rank in every movie I've seen this year in one stream and just kind of like touch on each one uh, throughout the video and like do maybe a two hour stream and talk about every film I saw this year. And if you want full in-depth, you can go and watch the reviews. But the problem is, I don't have any reviews for any of those films on the channel. So I thought over the next two weekends, so hopefully Nick, this Sunday coming and the Sunday after, I'm going to discuss um, my reviews, do 20 in one, 20 in another, because I've seen about 40 films. And I'm just going to go through, talk a little bit about each. Some will be a little bit more in-depth, some won't. And then um, give some ratings to them. And then Mike and Nate might make some appearance. Mike will probably be pre-recorded, but Nate might make an appearance for some of the ones he's seen. And that's pretty much the plan for the rest of the month until we... And then I'm going to put a video out about what's coming after that. But thank you for sticking with me, Mike. That's been a little bit longer than we expected, isn't it? Um, so <laughs> yeah, a little hopefully bit. we'll be able to start squeezing things down a little bit more um, yeah. as it goes on. I probably should have just done it as a Marvel one. Because the rest of them didn't really have that much, just trailers and the odd bit of bob. But um, look forward to D23 because there's going to be so much Star Wars, Marvel, Disney, Pixar, National Treasure, any other originals they're making, Willow. So we'll, we'll have a ton to talk about. And I think that's the weekend of September the 10th. Um, I think that's pretty much it, ladies and gents. I'm just going to move over to... This cam, I'm gonna to have to put the trio one on because I don't think I have a duo one for me and Mike. But um yeah, firstly, uh Mike, where can the lovely people find you? Uh they can find me on my Instagram at what Mike What94. Cool. Uh just wait for that to go through. And then um I just gotta plug Nate's stuff. Obviously he's not here because he had to he had to get going because he was pretty knackered and it did take longer than we were expecting. Hopefully we'll be able to start these streams a little bit earlier. And we won't have as much to talk about next time. Uh so um let's plug his bits. So you can obviously go and find him on YouTube on his own channel, Nathan Hennessy. He's got his uh Twitch, which is Gaelic Games. Uh I can't remember what Gaelic Games yeah, twenty four. Yeah, Gaelic Games twenty four, sorry. It's up there. Uh Nate Hennessy on Twitter, and then I'm sure he's also on TikTok at Nate Hennessy24 as well. So you can go follow him on all those bits, and hopefully, we'll see him for the next uh, San Diego Comic Con breakdown thing that we're doing. And then, uh, yeah, just me. Uh, obviously, you can like and subscribe here. Uh, make sure that if you want to watch the second part to this or the other SDCC announcements, make sure to subscribe here. And if you like this type of stuff and you like us doing live streams, sorry this one, as I say, has dragged on a little bit, then make sure you um, hit the like button and drop us a comment. Obviously, um, when this becomes a VOD, essentially, once the live stream's finished. Um, you've also uh, got myself on uh, the other uh, streaming services. Oh, and also don't forget to hit the notification bell. I was going to say, why did I say stream service? So you get notified every time I upload. <laughs> Follow me on Twitch, Day One Games. Don't really upload on there at the moment, but that's it's there. Brim Williams YouTube, that's where I'm, I tend to post what I'm actually doing there and then related to movies. So when I'm going to the cinema to watch certain stuff, so you know to expect a review to come up and things like that. Also, 
um, I tend to post my first reactions there. You've got Twitter, which is Bryn Williams YT. Don't really post on there, but it's another way to contact me for DMs and whatever if you want to get a hold of me for some video ideas or whatever. And finally, Facebook at This Week on the Silver Screen. Keep it locked to that page because every so often I haven't figured out the actual, um, shall we say, uh, plan for it yet but i would like to eventually dual stream to facebook and youtube if if i can if i can't then it'll just be youtube only but keep it locked anyway because these will probably all go up on facebook anyway um and okay. I, I was supposed to say it throughout the rest of the video but we just wanted to kind of get it all broken down don't forget to comment what you thought of everything we've talked about all the marvel phase four phase five and phase six announcements all the Marvel animation stuff. Let us know what your favourites is. Let us know what you think of all the announcements and what you're most looking forward to. So, yeah, ladies and gents, after that man of stream, I just want to thank Mike for sticking around and I want to thank Nate for going as far as he did. Hopefully, we shall see you again soon. And, yeah, ladies and gents, um, love spending these three hours and 48 minutes with you. Hopefully, the next one will be shorter. Enjoy the rest of your yeah. night. Enjoy the rest of uh, Tuesday. I shall see you in a little while. Goodbye. Peace out.